Right, all right, chat. A very good afternoon. Welcome to the stream. We're live a little bit early today. Welcome. Wasn't expecting anything to happen here until at least another hour, but here we are. Welcome indeed. Welcome, and <laughs> that's a good start, isn't it? Right. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Right, chat. Welcome. Welcome indeed. All right. So today, World Update 11 has... 11? World Update 13 has just released the Oceania update. Um, so that's just released. And along with that, the highly anticipated ATR for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Really looking forward to it. You can see it in the background here. We're going to have a, a quick look at it. Um, and then the plan for today, chat, is we are going to do a flight. Uh, we're going to do an absolutely stunning flight between Bora Bora, which has got a new airport. Um, it was already a stunning location anyway. It did have some POIs, but um, they've actually added more POIs to it. The airport's modeled in now. And uh, we're going to be flying a real-world flight, uh, real-world air Tahiti flight from... Oh, muted? Wait. Can you guys hear me? <laughs> the commentator, you are really... Okay, you guys can hear me. Right, cool. Fine. Yeah, I can see myself on my meters here. So, right, fine. Yeah, so we're going to be flying uh, Air Tahiti, a real-world flight from um, Bora Bora Airport over to Maria. Um, we're going to be on multiplayer today, but I do expect it's going to be super, super busy in that region of the world on multiplayer. So uh, I've put a pinned message at the top of the chat. Um, so guys, if you want to follow along on fly along with me for the flight today, um, then um, please do add me as a friend in Microsoft Flight Simulator and I'll add anyone uh, to a group and we'll, we'll join together as a group rather than doing it on the multiplayer servers because it's just going to be absolute chaos otherwise. Um, Bora Bora and uh, Maria, tiny, tiny islands. So um, yeah, I think that's probably going to be the best policy here. Obviously, let me know your username in the chat as well and I'll make sure I send you an invite to join the group in the flight today. Um, so before we do the flight, um, there have been quite a number of requests from you guys in the chat to see how I actually set up my cameras for a new aircraft. So seeing as this is a new aircraft, I did want to run through that before we do the flight. Um, so we're going to run through that. So the flight won't be departing for, you know, a little while yet, but we will, of course, we will, of course, have a good look at the aircraft itself um whilst we're doing the camera setup and uh before uh before we do the flight so um you've got a bit of time if you do want to join along um yeah it'll probably be i, I anticipate the camera setup time's probably going to take us maybe around half an hour or so uh maybe a little bit longer uh, and then we'll just do a little bit of tweaking with the controls as well on spad.next um just to show you guys how i do that as well because i know some of you guys are interested in that as well again it's a brand new aircraft so i kind of want to share this with you guys apologies if some of you guys wanted to see me fly straight away um but what we're going to be doing is we're going to be running through that first and then um obviously doing the flight we'll obviously like i say have a good look at the aircraft and i've been doing lots of <laughs> i've been doing lots of research lots of swatting up chat on atr procedures i've got the fcom uh the um flight crew training manual as well as the qrh to hand here and we're going to be running through some real world procedures in the atr and uh, i'm really really looking forward to it it's a really really cool aircraft very very modern and um it's it sounds like it's pretty easy to fly as well from what i've been reading in the uh, fcom of course i've never flown one before in real life or in the sim um so um yeah really looking forward to it and uh, yeah, the price is, um, well, in British pounds, I actually paid uh, 10 pounds, just over 10 pounds in British pounds. So there was actually a bit of a discount on there. I'm not sure what the discount is for. Um, that being said, I've, I've seen other people posting in the Discord saying it's six, 16 British pounds just over. So I'm a little bit confused on the pricing situation, but I paid uh, 10, uh, just over 10 British pounds. 
Um, but who have we got in the chat? Let's have a look before we get into things. We'll have a look at the liveries and stuff first of all, because I know obviously people are asking about that. Uh, so Face Cloud, welcome to the chat. Beluga, welcome indeed. Matt is here as well. Welcome indeed. Jan, welcome to the chat. Good to see you. It's been a little while. Welcome indeed. Uh, Mark BC is here. The commentator, Captain Ray. Uh, was Air is here as well. Welcome indeed. Are we paying in installments? Hopefully not. <laughs> Hopefully it actually flies for £10. Uh, <laughs> Chris, welcome to the chat. Hope you're doing well. Aviator04, welcome indeed. Uh, Alerta last, welcome to the chat. Ollie, welcome indeed. Welcome indeed. And uh, Dave, welcome to the chat. Jesus, welcome. NFKB, welcome indeed. Uh, Mark, Mike Backy, welcome to the chat uh salski welcome indeed ever thought of doing a setup tour um potentially yeah i mean I, I did actually do a video that released the other day actually of my next level racing seat here uh, i did a review about that and you can see a lot of my setup on there but um i will be doing a setup tour but i've not fully finished this room yet so um once that's done and um dusted then i'll do a setup tour uh, why not just fly on VATSIM or is that crazy as well? I mean, I don't know. I suppose it depends how confident you are. I am not flying on VATSIM today just because we are... Well, we're flying in an area of the world where it's very unlikely there's going to be any ATC. And uh, I kind of just wanted that extra space and time today just to get fully acquainted with the aircraft. But we'll definitely do some VATSIM flying in it uh, later on in the week. Um, got some cool routes planned up in Sweden and of course New Zealand so looking forward to that too um, Aviation JG welcome to the chat Carib Aviator welcome indeed welcome indeed looks like a BA146 with asthma <laughs> uh, yeah it kind of does a little bit yeah I, th I really like the look of the ATI in fact let's just do this while we're chatting here uh, I really like the look of the ATI I think it's a really cool looking aircraft very sort of uh, mo just it just looks like a, a modern machine if you know what I mean uh, Captain Ray welcome to the chat Seb Noblet welcome premium deluxe the user discount is that what you think it is interesting interesting uh, Soren welcome to the chat do you get both the ATR 42 and 72 you do indeed yes Dave Young welcome to the chat hope you're doing well Pele is here as well welcome to the chat uh, no worries at all dude I'll hopefully catch you again in one of the streams later in the week Uh, showing a 1674 for me did the discount apply when the payment went through for you no actually it went uh the discount was before i i purchased i can actually show you a screenshot i took a screenshot of it real quick um so let's have a quick look yeah it looked like this essentially for me when i bought it uh, again, I'm not sure the reason. It doesn't really say, but I mean, there we go. <laughs> I'm assuming there's more information about it on the forums, but I, I haven't I haven't been and checked yet. Benjamin's here. Welcome to the chat. Acelus, welcome to the chat. House, welcome indeed. Welcome indeed. Brian, welcome to the chat. Uh, can you use multiplayer mode on with FSLTL? You can, yeah. You can. Um, I'm not sure how well it works, but... Um, yeah, you can. Uh, Man Manic, welcome to the chat. When will more liveries release? I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure if it's just going to be a case of community created ones or some other ones will be released in other places, but uh, there we go. Uh, which airlines fly the 80? Okay. <laughs> Glenn Dathu, welcome to the chat. Welcome indeed. Welcome indeed. This is the World Update 13 sale. Interesting. So I think maybe they didn't update the price straight away. So the original price that went up was more expensive, but then they applied the sale to it. So some people have accidentally paid more. That's a bit controversial, isn't it? Dear, oh dear. Ryan E, welcome to the chat. Hope you're doing well. Welcome indeed. Laura is here as well. Welcome indeed. What's the key to go up with the drone camera mode? I'm not sure. It depends on your key bindings and what controller you're using, uh, Matra. So you'll have to check in the... Uh, um in in your key binds uh it, it should be called something like um drone translate up something like that the discount is for premium deluxe owners i think okay so multiple different potential options there do i know if it has a cabin or not we'll have a look in a moment 
what are the thoughts on the ATR so far? I've literally just picked it up and uh, I'm seeing it for the first time here with you guys. So I will tell you as we go along, but it does look very nicely modeled. Let's have a, a bit of a closer look, shall we? So um, we can't, for some reason, this, this camera up here, this one here, it doesn't seem to ever work for me anymore. I'm not sure the reason for that. The, I can only go between cockpit and the outside view, um, which is a bit annoying, but hey-ho. Right, okay. Soren, thank you very much for becoming a silver membership. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you. And uh, enjoy your new channel badge and emotes in the chat. Don't be afraid to spam the emotes. <laughs> DC Drones, welcome to the chat. Hope you're doing well. Right, so yeah, we can't really do too much with the camera here. Uh, unfortunately, I'm really not sure why it doesn't let me click on that middle one anymore, but nevertheless, let's have a look at some of the liveries. Uh, we've got the house livery, which we've been, had on for a while. We've got the Air Tahiti, uh, Tapuata, Foxtrot, Oscar Romeo, Victor Romeo, or Forever. This is in fact the actual aircraft that flies the route that we are going to be flying today. So that's what we'll be using for our flight today, which is very quite a nice looking livery, isn't it really? Um, so that's that one. We'll let it roll past one more time. Peter DR, welcome to the chat. That's a nice one. So basically the liveries, they're all Air Tahiti and then there's one Silver Airways and then the ATR-42 has some, of, uh, some, some liveries from Silver Airways and another airline, which I forget the name of. So that's that one. Fairly similar to the other one, but just different details, isn't it? How do you get the discounts? I'm not sure, Christian. I think it's some people are saying it's for premium deluxe customers, maybe, but that, that doesn't make that much sense to me. But um, yeah, I, I don't know how you get the discount. It, it just applied itself automatically for me. <laughs> hey, Fergus. Ferg, welcome to the chat, dude. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Dutch Flight Simplier, welcome to the chat. Can you show us a plane instead of talking as much? I am showing you the plane right now, my friend. But I do like to talk, so if you don't like that, then that's... Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, you've come to the wrong place. And then we've got a Silver Airlines livery, which is uh, quite nice. I'm not sure where Silver Lines actually operates. I mean, it's US registration, so I guess it's the US. I've never heard of them personally. And then we'll have a quick look at the uh, 42 as well. And then we'll we'll load into an airport and just have a bit of a closer look at uh, everything. Right, so we've got two here. We've got Silver Airways and Air Saint Pierre on the ATR forty two. Darren, welcome to the chat. Hope you're doing well. Discount is for the premium deluxe only, like the AN two two five. Oh, really? Right. So is that what it is? I didn't get a discount for the AN two two five. So <laughs> I'm a bit confused as to why I've got it for this one and not that one. DC Jersey 4070 has arrived. Very nice, my friend. Very nice. So that's that livery. Oh, crikey. We've got a little inside camera here. I feel like these are custom cameras. Like not every aircraft has, has these custom cinematic cameras. That's quite nice. I noticed they did add that to the SDK, one of the last couple of updates, which is uh, nice to see that some developers are utilizing that. And then we've got the Silver Airways, which is obviously going to be the same, really, just on an ATR-42. How much is it actually, then? It's just under £17, Alfie, but um, like I say, some people are getting a discount, which takes it under £11. <laughs> House, thank you very much, dude. Appreciate the uh, appreciate the support. <laughs> Uh, Henry says they fly around Florida and Northern Caribbean. Got you, got you, got you, got you. Main hub in Fort Lauderdale. Very good, very good. Is this high fidelity level? I'm not sure yet. I think we're, we're about to find out. It's one of their quote unquote expert series aircraft. So um, I would assume so. It's pretty high fidelity. I'm probably expecting something fairly similar to how the CRJ was because it's made by the same person. Edoop Zach, welcome to the chat. Hope you're doing well. 
154, 151 viewers, Ferg. Holy crap, I did not even realize. Welcome, everybody. I hope you're enjoying the stream so far. Consider hitting the like button if you like the ATR. Right, chat. So we'll get loaded in now. We'll have a bit of a look around the aircraft. And then, like I say, we are going to do a bit of a setup regarding the uh, cameras and things like that. Again, because many people have uh, have requested that. So uh, we'll go for the livery for the, the flight uh, that does this route in the real world. And then I'm not sure which parking we're going to go for here. We'll make it a bit lighter. Yeah, I have no idea. Let's go here. And then got some people doing friend requests. Uh, like I say, chat, if you do want to join the flight today on multiplayer, do add me as a friend. Look at the pinned comment on in the chat and um, we'll, we'll get a group going. Um, because like I say, on normal multiplayer, it's just going to be so busy here. It'll just be ridiculousness. So if you want to join, do consider doing that. Right, here we go, chat. Let's have a look then, shall we? I'm going to put up the FPS because someone will inevitably ask about it. FPS is in the top right. If you're interested in seeing at the moment, getting pretty good FPS. Let's go to the weather and just make it a bit more brighter here. And here we go. So this airport has been redone by Orbex. This is Bora Bora. And quite a lot of the island has been redone as well, actually. And it looks pretty fantastic. But I'm not going to keep you guys waiting any longer because I know people want to see this. Here she is. Looking very, very nice. Let's just have a quick look at the outside model first of all. Looking pretty good, I think. The modeling looks very, very nice. Let's just bring down the exposure a bit as well. Yeah, modeling looks nice. Texturing is pretty damn good as well, to be quite honest. Yeah, it looks very good, doesn't it? They've gone in with the decals here as well. Look at how visible that... Uh, writing is you'll have to excuse the aircraft shaking around a little bit that's probably because of fs realistic i just need to um copy a profile over there so we've got something that makes a bit more sense all right there we go cool Right, cool. There we go. So, yeah, looking very, very nice, I think. It's quite a fresh-looking model, isn't it? Fresh-looking uh, textures. It looks quite quite box-fresh, doesn't it? Um, but the modeling is, is very, very good. Very impressive. Texturing is, is pretty, pretty up there as well, I do have to say. I've definitely seen better tires, but they are pretty damn good, I have to say. <laughs> yeah, it looks fantastic, doesn't it? Even these liveries, like, look at how crisp that is. That is such a crisp livery. That is nuts. I wonder if they've used the decal method for the liveries as well, because that is so crisp. My camera is in the top right. It is, yes. Would it be better in the top left, do you think? Was was it covering something before? You'll have to tell me. Is there a longer variant for it? This is the longest variant out of the two. There's the 42 and the 62. The 62 being... Sorry. 42 and the 72. The 72 being the longer of the two variants. Uh, D. Develo, welcome to the chat. Welcome indeed. Since this is new, will GSX work with it? Um, it'll probably need some tweaking. Also, there is a tree here. Holy crap. <laughs> what is that doing there? Um, yeah, that's uh, not not great, is it? I'll tell you what we'll do, chat. Is let's, so GSX should work with it, but it, it, it will probably need 
a decent amount of tweaking to uh, to get it to work properly. So let's just go to um, this is ramp six, isn't it? I think, although the markings are not quite the same as what it showed on the world map, and they're in fact just letters here. So let's go for five. Oh, that's the wrong one. We want four, don't we? Let's just go to four so that we can uh, have that tree out of the way. That's a little bit of an awkward placed tree. And that's the wrong one as well. Where's that gone? Let's go over here. That's fine. Right, cool. So that's the outside. The outside looking very, very nice. Let's jump inside, shall we? Also, chat. There's a lot of, lot of chat messages coming through today. So um, apologies if I do miss any questions and things like that. Um... Can I connect to Vatsim? I'm not going to be on Vatsim today, no. Camera would be better in the center. <laughs> well, it is what it is, isn't it? I mean, I can hide it if you really want me to. Um, but this is where we, we, we generally have it top left or top right. Uh, has it just come out? It has indeed, yep. Yeah, it's come out. It's on the marketplace now. Henry's doing silver air from San Juan to St. Martin. Very nice. Yeah, that sounds epic. Right. Justin Cool, welcome to the chat. Lively Vids, welcome to the chat. David White, welcome. Felix, welcome. Uh, Jarrah's RC, do I already know how to fly this plane? I think I do. <laughs> I've spent probably about eight, eight hours or something so far studying up on this plane. So I, I would, I feel like I do know how to fly it. Yes, but I've never actually done it in practice. I've just done ground school, so to speak. Crikey. Right. Well, let's have a look around then, shall we? The cockpit is looking very nicely done. I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure about these reflections though, guys. They've used that. They've used the, that sort of reflection texture that you find at some airports as well, where if you get it at the right angle, you can actually see there's some people in there. <laughs> there's a pilot. I mean, it looks okay if you don't notice that, but I always notice that. So yeah, anyway. Um, <laughs> the texturing looks really nice in here, though, I have to say. It definitely looks like a lived-in cockpit. So that's cool. Um, let's have a look around, shall we? Oh, they've got the same reflections there on the uh, on on this glass as well. Oh dear! <laughs> I hope that gets changed. Does this open? Oh, it does. Beautiful. Amazing, amazing. Oh, one thing I did want to check actually is there is a brake accumulator gauge out here on the one of the landing gears. I forget which one it is. I'm pretty sure it's this left one. Um, and I wanted to see if that actually is uh functional or even modeled at all or maybe oh there it is uh maybe that's not functional that doesn't look like it is going to be functional unless that's the way it's supposed to look but it doesn't look like that in the uh flight crew training manual Yeah, no, it shouldn't look like that. It should have three gauges in there, but obviously that's not being modeled by the looks of things. Never mind. Back inside. Right, what we got? Let's just work our way around here, chat. Oh, we've got a the, um, the comm hatch. Does that open all the way? Oh, sorry, that's the document door, isn't it? Where is the... There should be a little little hatch as well where you can speak to the ground crew through. sure that was there or is it this and it's just not opening because there is another click spot there it just won't let me interesting we'll work that out in a bit yeah this is the com com hatch so you would you would get your your documents passed through here from the ground crew unless yeah i'm sure they showed that opening in one of the live streams We'll come back to that. Nose wheel steering. Yep, yeah, that works. 
I'm just scanning for click spots here, chat, to make see what works and what doesn't. Oxygen test works. We'll have a look at the EFB in a moment. I mean, it looks like everything is is working, chat. Everything you can mouse over. Oh, you can even get rid of the mic. Wait, where has that actually gone? <laughs> where has that actually gone? Can you adjust the seat, though? That is the question. Yeah, I'm not sure where that microphone's gone, chat, but um, uh, I don't think we'll be needing that anyway. This knob doesn't work. Sun visors? Sun visors. Oh, it does work. It's a scroll wheel, Jobby. Actually, wait. Can you just hold a click and hold? You can click and hold. There we go. It's a bit slow, but it does the job. And it clips through this little vent as well. Which is a bit... A bit immersion breaking, isn't it? Overheads. Let's see. Is there some key binds? There is some key binds. Overhead looking nice. Circuit breakers do not work. That's fine. Expected to be fair. Is there a real, uh, real airline livery yet? There is Aviation 050. We're using one right now. Does anyone know the app that shows a landing rate after a landing? There's a few, but yeah, the most commonly used one is G's. As uh, Ali and Ali Jandro said, sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Is there a cabin? We're going to have a look at that in a moment. I think there is, but we're going to have a look in a minute. Right. Um, yeah, everything else looks like it's fairly, fairly functional. Great. And the microphone. I still don't know how to get that back, but hey ho. <laughs> There's no EFB on the right side though. That's a bit interesting for me because I always fly on the right, don't I? But it should be doable. Do these blinds work? No, they don't. These these curtains on the side don't work, but hey ho, we're just testing. We're testing all the things. I mean, the textures look great in here, don't they? This is the first texture that looks a bit pixelated to me, but everything else looks fantastic. Really, really nicely done, this cockpit. I do have to say, does the uh, this seat work? It, that's not a seat, or is it? Yes, it is, but... Um, mm, doesn't appear to work. Oh! Fantastic! <laughs> Great stuff. There's another little uh, light up here. Does the emergency hatch work? No. Oh! Oh! What we got here, chat? Oh! Oh! <laughs> There's a cabin! Beautiful! That is a nicely done cabin though, isn't it, chat? Crikey. Andy, welcome to the chat. Howling Crazy, welcome to the chat. AT, welcome to the chat. Alejandro, got it. Got it, got it, got it. Welcome, dude. Welcome, indeed. Looking very nice, chat. Honestly. Very nicely done cabin. I mean, I'm not expecting any functionality in here, but it does look good. Oh! I'm actually blocked. Huh. If I go at this, this level here, I'm blocked at going any further forwards, but if I... Go a little bit higher, I can go past it. Tray tables work? No. No. No, I need a refund. <laughs> yeah, it looks good, doesn't it, chat? Looks really good. How much is it? Uh, it was... Um, some people are saying it was just over £16, and but I got it for just over £10. So I think it depends really and i don't think we've worked out yet whether why why i got a discount and and why some people haven't got a discount i 
Fire handles were missing text. Philip, welcome to the chat. We'll have a have another look at that in a moment. Was that the fire handles on the overhead, really? Well, it looks fantastic, doesn't it, chat? It looks really, really fantastic, modeling and texturing wise. And it is incredibly uh, well priced as well. Yeah, really well priced, chat. Uh, Aviation with Elliot. Welcome to the chat. Hope you're doing well. Uh, ATR72. Yes, indeed. Ah, yes. Fire handles are missing the text, but is that just because the lights are not on behind it? Study level. I'm not sure yet, but a lot of the buttons work, so... <laughs> Ah, so it it is. Are we, are we confirming that now, F Tan? It is a confirmed thirty three percent off if you if you got the premium deluxe. Is that confirmed? Do you have a source for this information? I don't want to be spreading false information now. Air Moose, welcome to the chat. Imap, Imap, welcome to the chat. New subscriber, thank you very much for subscribing, dude. I appreciate that. Right, chat. Well, let's have a quick look at the OFB then, and then we're going to do some quick camera setup, like I say earlier on, and then we'll uh, we'll get cracking. So we've got a payload page here, um, where we can stick in all our weights. Good. Takeoff trim is calculated here as well, which you can set with a button by the looks of things. And then you've got all of the operating speeds, which uh, looks like you can actually can you change those. What can you change in here? Oh, hang on a minute. <laughs> how do you actually... I'm not sure how you actually change the... Oh, I've got explanation of the speeds as well. I'm not sure how you change the... Um, the weights there, but we'll we'll come back to it. I'm sure we'll work it out. Uh, we've got performance. We've got takeoff performance there. And landing data as well. Quite nice to see. Lovely. Great stuff. Aircraft. Oh, let's have a look at this then, shall we? We've got ground power. Service door. Main door. Cargo door. Tail prop. <laughs> Love to see it. Love to see it. Uh, maintenance. Uh, we could do some maintenance. So this design of the tablet, you'll notice this is very similar to the CRJ. And then we've got some options as well. Again, very similar to the CRJ. Very good. Right. Fantastic. We can adjust the terrain awareness system resolution as well not sure why it's on surely you would want that on 100 percent. let's go 100 percent there good display click spot help oh there's so there's some click spots as well on the actual uh, pfd and the mfd and um the ewd as well by the looks of things good right cool and then there's some throttle setup but again we'll come to that in a short while Good. All right. Did it come with a checklist in the files? I haven't actually checked that, to be quite honest. Um, but I would assume it probably uses the SIM checklists because um, that's what Microsoft Aircraft generally use, don't they? You can see you've got full checklists in here. But I believe the, um, the avionics system in this aircraft actually has the checklist built into it as well, which is quite cool. Is there a real airline livery yet? I already answered that one, Aviation. Yes, there is. When did it release? About half an hour ago, uh, Elliot. Biggles, welcome to the chat. Is it heavy on the frames? Well, you can see my FPS in the top right of the screen. So you could be the judge for yourself. Although I'm not sure why it's going above 60 because I have V-Sync on. <laughs> Which is a bit strange. But yeah, frame's very good, but we haven't turned the aircraft on yet. Let's just have a quick look at what we've just enabled outside, shall we? One moment, chat.
Will be set chat. Right, I have no idea. I was trying to find what my keybind is for FS Realistic for the first person mode, but I'm, I'm not sure what it is, so that's fine. We'll just carry on like this. So we've got chocks now. I'm not sure if the chocks were there before. I'm pretty sure they weren't. Uh, we've got the main door here. Or oh, that would be, would that be classed as the service door? It is actually the service door, isn't it? For the flight crew and then the passengers would actually board down here at the back. Very nice little stairs then. Look at the detail. Not sure why it's, it's, it shouldn't be bouncing so much chat, but that's FS realistic, I think, that's making it bounce. Then we've got the um, the tail skid here, which doesn't look like it's being textured. Oh, it's it's not a tail skid, is it? But um, it, it serves a similar similar purpose. This thing is basically just in case the aircraft is loaded incorrectly and it drops back. It protects the tail and it should be removed for flight. But it looks like they've actually missed the texture off there, potentially. I think that's supposed to have some uh, white and red lines on it, potentially. Now we've got another door here. Lovely. Tail, tail jack. Thank you, Neil. Thank you, Neil. And then there's no GPU modeled, but I suppose you can use the Microsoft Flight Sim uh, GPU or you can use the GSX GPU, I suppose, for this as well. Right, chat. So let's do some quick camera stuff. We'll get that out of the way and then we'll get cracking with the flight, shall we? So a lot of you guys have requested... Uh, how I do my camera files basically for my aircraft and um, because nearly all the aircraft I fly well pretty much all of aircraft I fly here on stream I actually set up a custom camera file um, because well number one I fly on the right hand side seat uh, for the majority of my flights majority of aircraft and uh, which I will be doing this one actually as well and number two um, well it just it's just better really for the stream because it's it's more you know, I've got more cameras available to me and I can switch between them much easier than just saving everything on the custom cameras. Um, so we're going to do that just first of all here and then we'll uh, we'll get cracking with the flight. So let's have a look. I'm just trying to find... In fact, I will just share, share this with you guys. So what I'm doing now is I'm just having a look for the ATR aircraft in the official folder and there it is. Um, I was going to check in here to see if there was any documentation as well, which there isn't. Um, so we'll go to the Sim Objects folder, the Airplanes folder, ATR 72600. We've got a common folder as well, which doesn't appear to have any documentation in there either. Um, and then we'll come into the ATR 72600, and then we've got the cameras file here. So I'm going to be basically modifying that, but not in this folder. So. I'll make basically a quick, I basically usually make a quick little mod essentially. So I'll use one of the ones that I've used in the past as a template, which I'll use this A310 one. We'll call it um, AT72 FO cameras. Like that. And then content info, we'll just replace the name of that with the same package name. And then the uh, manifest will open up because we'll, we'll need to amend that. And we'll just come back here. And we just need to use the package name here of the ATR. So we'll use... It's going to be... Microsoft Aircraft ATR. So you copy and paste that into the manifest on the first line here. That's that. And then you can put in your name of the package here, which just shows up in Content Manager. You don't really need to do this if you're making a uh, just a mod for yourself, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, ATR 72600 cameras. And then all the version stuff and this package size, I've noticed, doesn't really make a difference if you don't update that. So just to make things quicker for you guys, just going to save that right there and then uh, we can close that off 
Uh, we'll go back to my community folder and then the layout is something that we'll need to amend, but we won't do that manually. We'll do that in a moment. Then we'll open up the Sim Objects Airplanes folder. And then we want to just copy this folder name here to this one. And then we'll take the cameras.config file from there and just paste it in there. So that's what I do initially to create a basically a modded version of the camera file. So now we can amend that and we're not affecting the original file. And obviously if there are any updates to the aircraft, um, then you know my changes don't get overwritten by the updates and it's just a better way to do things really. And I do need to restart the sim to actually have that file come into effect. Um, but what I will do first of all before we restart the sim, is it a new plane? It is. Sorry, I'm just going to catch up with some messages here real quick. NM Flyer Robin, welcome to the chat. Uh, welcome indeed. It is, yeah, it's looking very, very good. Arak, welcome to the chat. Neil M, welcome to the chat. Uh, it has an APU sort of situation with the right engine. It does indeed, yeah. It's using uh, something they call hotel mode, isn't it? Where they start the engine essentially with, uh, with the prop brake engaged here. Which uh, you can turn on there. And it basically just starts the engine without the prop turning. So it's a bit quieter, still provides bleed air and electrical power uh, to the, uh, the aircraft. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of like an APU, isn't it? Because it doesn't actually have an APU. Uh, Arthur, Arthur, welcome to the chat. Hope you're doing well. YTP channel, welcome to the chat. Am I going to showcase the sounds? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're going to do a full flight here in uh, in a short while. Roy says, I think I'm going to skip this one. Yeah, I mean, fair enough. It's, it's obviously not for some people. It's just a certain type of aircraft, isn't it? Uh, but welcome to the chat. Hope you're doing well. Welcome indeed. Welcome indeed. Aviation JG, could we start it up? We are going to start it up in a, a short while here. Um, let's have a look. Right, cool. I'll try and keep up with the messages chat, but it's likely I'm going to miss some. Um, hey, stream, welcome to the chat. Mohammed, welcome to the chat. Is this new Asobo ATR? It is indeed, yes. Um, and it's... Oh, Siri, quiet down now. Um, it's made by Hans Hartmann and uh, Microsoft. Information Alva, welcome to the chat. Yeah, it's an absolute steal, really. I mean, I'm, I'm yet to see how, how detailed the systems are and stuff, but from what I've seen so far, it does look good. Well worth the money. Did I buy the plane on the marketplace? Yes, it's exclusively on the marketplace. Joseph, welcome to the chat. Personally wanted to dash eight, yeah. <laughs> well, apparently Majestic are working on their dash eight for the sim. So yeah, that'll be very exciting when that comes. Ollie, I do like it so far, yeah. Check the yoke is working, please. Let's see. Oops. No, it's not. But do you know why the yoke is not working? It's not because I've got my controls set up incorrectly. It's actually because of uh, some feature of this aircraft. Now you can see nothing's moving there. I'm moving my joystick. It's not moving. Hydraulics, no, the yoke should still move without hydraulics. Is it quality like the CRJ? I would, yeah, I think it's it's looking, it looks better than the CRJ. Um, but I would assume it's going to be fairly similar depth-wise because it's the same developer. Exactly, Mohammed, that's the one. It's because there's a gust lock on this aircraft. Stop the flight controls moving. So if we take that off... Now it should move. There we go. Nice. Nice. Very good. Very, very good. Uh, alert alas, I'm not watching eight hours of ground school. Okay. Fine. <laughs> right, Chen Chat. So let's just finish off with the cameras that I was going to do. Um, so basically my method here to set the cameras, what I usually do is... so. Um, in an aircraft in the sim, you usually have the instrument cameras, which are on your control and the number key binds, which is these ones that you can see here. In pretty much every aircraft I've ever tried, these these are not... I don't really like them, to be honest. I like to usually 
change these to my own. So that's the first thing I usually do. And then I also change these quick views here as well so that um, they're a bit better. And for some reason, it, it seems to be using the, when I do a quick view right, it's looking up. And when I do a quick view left, it's looking to the right. So that will need changing as well. So we'll get that done real quick. And, um, and then we'll continue on. How much is it? It's 16 British pounds or 10 pounds if you've got the premium deluxe version. Ed, welcome to the chat. I hope you're doing well. Welcome, welcome. Right. Okay. So I fly on this side usually. So let's make sure we're in the correct seating position, first of all, by checking here. And it looks like the seating position here is, is all good to go. So what I like to do to set my cameras up um, is to get the actual camera positioning for the config file. So you guys will know if you've ever mucked about with this before, you've got these XYZ PBH and then you've got the zoom level as well, which basically makes up most of the uh, view that you see from each camera or, or the camera angle basically. Um, so what I usually do is I will save all the camera angles that I want as custom camera views and then I'll access the custom camera view file and then copy them over to my amended cameras.config file. So what that does is it basically frees up all the custom camera views for me um, to use for other things then. So we'll get that done first of all. So I think this camera view initially is uh, quite a bit too zoomed in. So I'm going to zoom it out and tilt it down a little bit like that. And then I'll save that as custom camera view one. So if I now reset my view and then go to custom camera view one, that's that one. Um, then we'll do some instrument views as well. So I like number one usually to be the EFB. So we'll go with that. Save that as number two initially. Then we'll do the usually the PFD, MFD or ND. And I usually try and like to make sure that I'm getting in the buttons as well, which is going to control what I see on my ND. So just try and get some of some of those in as well. Although I'm sure I think this ATR model doesn't have the same buttons as what I've been studying here. <laughs> I assume it's probably controlled through here and through the touch screen because this is actually touch screen, unlike the real aircraft. So we'll just go with that for now. Go for that. And I've just mucked that up. My apologies. Right, so save that one as custom camera two. That goes custom camera three. Actually, that's a bit too. There we go. Custom camera three. And number four is usually my autopilot panel or whatever it's called in the respective aircraft. So we'll do that and four. And then the next one is usually some kind of view of the engine instrumentation. So we'll do something like, like this because these two will function as uh, instrument. Sorry. These two can function as uh, system display pages as well. So we'll make sure we get all three of them in like that. So that's going to go on. I always forget which number I'm up to. Uh, EFB, PFD. Okay, cool. And then number five, I always do for the FMS. Or in this case, it's called an MCDU. So that'll be six. Next one's usually on the throttle quadrant. And I want to make it sure that we can actually see all the, the buttons and things. So that'll be on the next one. Seven. Eight will be the lower pedestal. And then we'll do an overhead view, which I, I think this one is, is absolutely fine, honestly. We'll just tweak it a little bit so it's actually straight. <laughs> Okay. 
I can go a nine. And that's that's I think all the instrument views I'm gonna do for the cockpit for now because I don't wanna I don't want this to take absolutely forever. Uh, using the TCA Airbus, I am indeed. Is this study level? I'm not sure if it's study level or not yet. I mean, study level is a bit of a... Uh, one of those terms that people... is It's a bit difficult to define, isn't it, really? But high fidelity, um, it's supposed to be, but we haven't flown it yet. Right, guys. So, basically what I've done there is I've created all these custom camera views, which I'm now gonna transfer over to my config file. And I know some of you guys have probably just come in here for the ATR, but this is something that my followers of the channel have been asking for for a while to see how to do this. So that's what I'm doing at this moment in time, but we should be done fairly, fairly quickly. So um, this is the config file from my mod. And basically what we're going to do is I'll come back to Windows Explorer. We'll go into the Microsoft Flight Simulator package folder and app data local. Uh, we'll go to local local cache, sim objects, airplanes, and then we'll go to the Microsoft ATR 72600. And you can see there is a cameras.config file here as well. So these are actually your custom cameras. So if we go and... Let's just go view two columns. We'll put these on the right. So we've got our custom cameras here on the left and on the right is the modded file. So we'll just need to copy and paste them over in order. So number one, you can see title one there. There's that one. So we'll just copy the initial XYZ and the initial PBH over to here. So that's now gonna be the default view for the pilot in the aircraft. Number two is going to be our EFB. So we actually want to scroll down here until we get to the first instrument camera, which is here, instrument 01. Copy that, paste it in there. And the initial zoom as well, can't forget that one. Number three, we'll go on to the next one as well. You can see there are some uh, VAR toggle uh, nodes to hide here as well. So on the first camera, we don't actually need to do those, but on the second camera, we will. So I'm actually just going to cut those, put them in instrument two. If I can find this, the line. I don't think it's actually on this. We'll just copy the whole line. Cut it even. So we'll put that there, then we'll go and copy this, put it there, copy that, put it there, and so on and so forth. So we'll just repeat this until we've got all the instrument cameras that we defined. And then we'll just need to restart the sim and then we are good to go. So I hope that answers your questions to anyone that was wondering how I did this. Now, I do usually do a bit more of a, a process to do the fixed cameras as well for an aircraft. But um, I'm, prob I'm probably going to skip that here today. Um, usually I use the, the dev mode to do that. Um, but that's going to take a while to do. And we've got a lot of people here, so... <laughs> I'm, I'm eager to get a move on for you all. I know there's people in the chat probably thinking, what the hell is this guy doing right now? And th like I said, this is something that my followers have been requesting for a while. Um, so we're, we're just getting this done real quick. Um, I did have other plans as well, but I'm cutting those short for you guys who don't want to wait. So, <laughs> um, so please remember that one. <laughs> Right, cool. So we just need to do the quick views now and then we are ready to rock and roll. So I'm just going to overwrite these existing custom cameras that I made uh, with what I want to be the quick views. So quick views are essentially going to be... In fact, we'll, we'll restart the sim now. I think that'd be better. And then uh, we'll come back to it. First of all, I'm going to go into accessibility though and just turn this uh, menu animations off because 
Yeah, let's do that. Right, so we'll quit the sim real quick, and then I'll catch up with some chat messages, and then uh, we should be ready to rock and roll. One more thing you need to do as well is, obviously, I've created a custom mod here. So we'll go into the... Um, we'll go into here. So what you need to do is you need to download Tommy BK's livery um, MSFS Painter Toolkit from flightsim.to as well. If you've made a mod, click on layout. This is a layout generator. So that file that we glossed over earlier on, select the package AT72 FO cameras, select it and save and merge new layout file, <coughs> file and, and that should be done then. And then it's all gonna work nicely for us. So let's get the sim loaded back up. We should be good to rock and roll. Can you go have how you've configured your TCA for this? Yeah, I am going to do that next. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so confused by this plane. What's confusing you, Adam? Um, what I'm doing so far is, is definitely not something that everybody's going to do. Um, this is just something that, like I say, a few people have been asking and uh, hopefully it's, it's helpful to them. How do you set up the camera views? Right. <laughs> we're literally, we're going through that now. Um, which part of it is it that you, you didn't, didn't get there? Uh, Manu, welcome to the chat. Hope you're doing well. Matt's here as well. Good to see you, dude. Uh, Peter Stout, welcome to the chat. Would be great to see the aircraft yet. Yeah, we're going to get to it. I mean, you can rewind a little bit in the stream as well to see the initial tour we did. Uh, Imran, the price is, uh, 16, just over 16 British pounds, but there is a discount as well. For, I believe premium deluxe owners to uh, just over 10 pounds. How is the FPS? The FPS is really good so far. I haven't powered the aircraft up yet, so I can't really comment on that. But without the systems powered on, I'm getting, you know, my max frame rate, which is 60 FPS. That's what my limit is on the uh, sim. This has a new air management system by ATR2. NAMS, very good. Yeah, it is a very modern version of the ATR, isn't it? Um, right. Is it an Asobo aircraft and another developer? It is, Elliot. Yes, it's Hans Hartmann who did the CRJ. I can't believe how many people there are here, chats. Crikey. <laughs> <laughs> Peter DR, welcome to the chat. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Pringles, welcome to the chat. Welcome indeed. I'm one of the only ones streaming this. Oh, I see. Right. Okay. And you're all probably just head in your hands thinking what is this guy doing man fly the goddamn plane yeah we're gonna fly it <laughs> is this a sobo's new atr it is indeed mohammed yep 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 we're nearly there chat i do apologize for those of you that just want to see the plane but i've already explained this multiple times uh what we're doing so far <clears throat> It is also in the title of the video, full add-on setup. <laughs> this is part of my setup that I do for almost every plane. Jonas, welcome to the chat. Hope you're doing well. Uh, officially, Dave says, favorite payware airport. Well, that is a very good question, Dave. That is a very good question. I get asked that relatively infrequently, and it's always a very, very difficult one to answer. But I think probably Aerosoft Brussels is probably... Uh, pro probably best uh, I, I think i'm not sure it's so difficult to say there's multiple fly tampers that i absolutely love um there's obviously uh belfast pyre dev edinburgh um any builds as lax jfk heathrow there's so many it's difficult to say but brussels is the first one that came to my mind there right so Let's go back to where we were, which was at uh, Bora Bora.
entity B. Right, cool. Quizzy, welcome to the chat, dude. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you. Welcome. Right then, chat. So, now that we have done all our cameras, or most of them anyway, um, what have we got here? MSFS version warning. Okay, that's fine. So, now if we go into the cockpit, we should... Oh, no, that's... <laughs> okay, something's not worked there on the cameras. Hmm. Interesting. Do we have any of them? We don't. Right. So the layout is correct. Manifest is correct. That's correct. Okay, I'm not sure what's what's gone wrong there. Okay. Two moments, chat. Right, let's just see if the uh, package is actually mounted. It has. Okay, so it's something in the files then that's 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 problematic. I'm really not sure why that's not worked, to be honest. Let's just check what I've done here. Maybe I saved it on the other file by accident. No, I definitely saved it on the right file. Okay. Uh, I've tried the, the keybinds, guys. Yeah. It must be something to do with potentially the manifest file. Let's just quickly double check what I've put there. Okay, so that's correct. Let's just check this one. Ah, okay. Um, right, so the ATR is actually... In its, in its manifest.json, it's actually defined as having a dependency as well so i'm not sure if that's why why it's not working but that's being said i'm sure when i did my cameras for the a310 that had dependency as well yes it did okay Interesting. Hmm. Unless one of these has, unless these have their own camera config file defined, they don't. Just gonna amend some of these real quick. Just in case that's what it is. Feel like it shouldn't be, but nevertheless. Okay. Really? 
We have sounds, but um, we're not going to actually fly the aircraft yet. Yeah, it doesn't, still doesn't seem to have worked for me. Hmm. Okay, chat. I'm not really sure why it's, uh, why it's doing that. Anyways, I'm not going to try and troubleshoot it here, chat, because I know you guys are, are waiting. Um, we'll just crack on with the flight here. We'll just crack on and we'll do it from the, uh, the left side. So we'll just reload so that the aircraft's not running. If you want to join along with the flight, you're more than welcome to add me as a friend and I'll add you to the group here. So let me know your uh, username and I will add you to the group if you want to join. Uh, does it have auto throttle? Um, it doesn't have an auto throttle as such, but it has uh, basically auto torque control, which is... I suppose it's almost the same thing really isn't it so it manages the torque of the engines in order to uh, achieve a certain speed right we'll do a quick control setup then we'll get going we'll see if it works with gsx as well shall we right so in the tablet there was a throttle setup so i set up my throttle quadrant usually in spad.next um, so we'll use the single piston as a template and we'll see how how that works so for the throttles delete those because that's definitely not going to be using usable in this and if I had to make a guess, the throttle for this aircraft is probably going to be the same as the Phoenix. So let's just go here and just remind myself what that was. It's this one here. So I'm actually just going to copy that. We'll go back over. Paste that in there. Right, does that work? It does, grand. And it seems to be in the right right spot as well. So what we want to do is let's have a look here. Throttle setup. So we've got a uh, dual axis. Has a reverser. Great, cool. This is very similar to the um, CRJ, isn't it? Right, so I'm just making sure my throttle 2 is set as well. So if I move those now, yeah, they're moving. Beautiful. Right, so what we want is we want the rat, uh, we want the idle position to be there. We want the notch, which is basically the auto throttle notch, I suppose, if you like, to set to there. And then the ramp is, I suppose, right max power then. So. Let's go and set those fully forwards. Like that. So we'll okay that. Let's see how that looks. Interesting. So that needs tweaking. Oh, the, the, the flight idle has like a notch in it, which is quite nice to see as well. Although, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, cool. So that's good. Just tweak this idle one on the left a little bit. Um, add a hundred to that, maybe. Uh, still not liking it. Just try that. There we go. That's better. And then into reverse. Good. Right. Cool. So that's pretty simple, isn't it? Um, I'm actually going to make the idle tolerance even bigger just so I don't accidentally put it in reverse when I don't want to. 
There we go, that's better. Cool. All right. Stop calling it auto throttle. Yeah, it really isn't an auto throttle, isn't it? Is it, uh, Mohammed? It's uh, like I said, it's it's like a uh, auto talk, I suppose. I'm not sure what the actual term is for it. I don't know if you can fill us in on that one. Joe, welcome to the chat. Good evening. Right, so that's that done for the throttle. That should be fairly. That was fairly straightforward. So the flaps, I think, should work with the default axis, which it does. That's good. Condition levers, I'm not going to bind because, well, I don't have two two throttles spare to do it. But they're essentially usually in flight. You just leave them in auto anyway. Uh, parking brake, we'll test. Okay, that sort of works, but that probably is going to need some tweaking. So at the moment I have this, this is how I have it set up in spad.next for the parking brake for this one. This is again just based on my piston engine. So you can see it doesn't come back on when I come back up here. I'm probably running down the brake accumulator here, but that, that's fine. <laughs> uh, so if I just change this to maybe... Parking brakes set. Maybe one. I'm not sure. I can't remember how that event works. And I can't remember if this event works. It sometimes doesn't, I don't think, but let's try it. Yeah, it doesn't seem to want to work for me there. Hmm. Maybe there's an LVAR we can use real quick. So let's just quickly go to here. So to load, to bring the LVARs in here to spad.next, click add LVARs, and then what I do, just wait a few minutes, sort it by a number of changes, get rid of anything that's going crazy at the top, like that, and then we can just go boom, and then boom. That should hopefully now be at the top. Park emergency brake, so that's good. That's what we wanted. MSATR, park brake, park emergency brake, value zero, and then value two is on. So, go switched off. We'll delete that one. Add, change data value, MSATR, MER. Was it in MER? Let's just scroll here. I'm sure it was a mer break, but let's check. Park. Okay, it was park first. Right, fine. So, back in here, switched off, delete that, change data value, a, uh, MS ATR park. There we go. I'm going to set that to zero when it's switched off and switched on. Set it to two. And then now we should have, boom. Okay, that didn't work as I thought it would do. Let me just try that again. Hmm. Get rid of the this guy. This guy. There we go. 
Perfect, so that's parking brake done. I'm not going to bother with the rudder trim for today. I highly doubt we're going to have an engine failure. Gear up and down. Should use the default events, I'm guessing. Yeah, that works fine. And then the spoilers axis. Now, I'm not really sure what I'm going to set this to, to be honest, in this aircraft. Because there is no spoilers uh, lever in here. Um, so I'm not, I'm not really sure. Um, I think I'll probably just leave that for now. And might think of something else at a later stage for that. <clears throat> uh, Henry says, full reverse on my TCA is ground idle in the sim. And idle up on the TCA is fly idle. Hmm. Well, you might need to take, it might be worth taking the detents out for this aircraft because... Yeah, I'm not sure if you can change. I haven't found a way to change the distance here between flight idle and ground idle. And I actually have custom detents in my TCA, so it, it might not be as much of an issue for me as it was is for someone with the default. Seems like the ramp is in is not in the max is not in the max for the throttles. Did validation got an error? Oh. Ramp is for the reverse, then. I'm dumb. Need rudder trim to make flying easier. You don't need a rudder trim in an aircraft like this, unless you have an engine failure. Spoilers are automatic. They are indeed. Do validation. Yeah, I will just check that. I've definitely got the ramp the wrong way around, haven't I? Yeah. So, ramp... Uh, Mohammed can probably answer this actually. Is ramp the full, fully back uh, reverse position? Or is it at the start of the reverse position? I, I, I can't remember from what I read earlier. Ramp is full forwards. Okay. So is ramp full forwards before the max power position then, I guess? Yeah, there we go. Cool. Sorted. Got it. So we've got ground idle, flight idle. Hello? <laughs> okay, that doesn't that seems to have made the situation worse. Let's just try set them again real quick. So idle. Notch. Ramp. Validate. Okay. Okay. Ground idle. Flight idle. There we go. Oh, that's a bit funky. The notch needs adjusting and then ramp and then max power. There we go. Got it. Perfect. Cool. So... Let's just adjust the notch slightly. And then I'm going to increase the tolerance of the notch because that's going to be, it's going to be sat in there for, for some time. Cool. Right. So. There we go. Much easier to get into the notch there. Great. Cool. Got it. Fantastic. Thanks for your help, guys. Thank you, Mohammed. Much appreciated. Good. Right. Okay, so in terms of other controls here on the TCA, I'm pretty sure we've, we've, I mean, there's not really too much else to do. I have my rudders and my tow brakes set up using the default Microsoft Flight Sim controls. So full left, full right, left tow brake, right tow brake. That's good. Yeah, I think we're good to go regarding that. No issues. Fine. Good. All right. So then, let's just uh, make a flight plan real quick on Simbrief. And we can get cracking. What I'll do first of all though, because I know you guys are probably itching to hear the aircraft. Let's just crack it on, on external power real quick so that we've got that going. You guys can hear. Sorry, keybinds. Wrong keybinds. Right, so battery on. That's got a guard on it. 
MFC 1A, 2A flashing fault light, 1B, 2B flashing fault light, and then they go out. That is correct. That's good. Great. Good. Then there is some other things to check, of course, but um, we're going to just get the sim brief done first. Go to ground power as well. We'll get this stuff done. There was a sound for the door there as well. I don't know if you guys caught that. Right, and I do need to adjust this camera a bit because this is a bit too close in. I forgot what my keybind is actually for that. So you can set a custom camera in any aircraft for the pilot view by using the VFR pilot view save if you guys didn't know that. Uh, I've got it on right control, right alt and U. So that will amend the default view. So if I press that keybind, there we go. And now if I reset my camera position, it's always going to go back there, which is great. Cool. All right, so I'll just set up a flight plan real quick on sim brief, and then we'll take it from there. Is it worth it? So far, I feel like it is really nice for £10, but uh, like I say, I've not really done too much in it yet, but we're about to get cracking. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'll just use a default sim brief profile. AT76. Very short flight plan. Lovely. Right. And then a the call sign. BTA229. Mariner, thank you very much for being a member for 10 months. Much appreciated, my friends. Thank you, thank you. Right, so we've got a flight plan and we've got some weights and stuff. And as we do on every stream, guys, if you are new here, we do this every single stream. Uh, we'll just go through and brief the OFP very quickly. And then we can continue on. Right, also, do we have anyone that I need to add? You guys will need to let me know your usernames. If any of you are these, these, these guys right here, and you want to join the flight. In fact, what I'll do is I'll go and start a separate chat actually can I I can't do that anymore I don't think start a Q&A drop your usernames here after you added me to join right cool so at the top of the chat now there should be a drop down where you can drop your usernames just so they don't get lost in the rest of the chat how do you calibrate the throttle with the Thrustmaster Airbus? We've just been through that uh, LTOFT. Um, it's all done here through the um, options page, throttle setup on the EFB. Right, okay, so we'll brief the OFP as we normally do. So today we're going to be Air Tahini 229. We're going from um, Bora Bora over to Muria. We're in an AT76. I've not done the registration on... I've not done a sim brief airframe for it. So the registration's obviously wrong there. But we're not in that aircraft um, today. Uh, normally I would set up the proper airframe. But just trying to save a little bit of time here. So that we can get moving. Uh, call sign's going to be Air Tahini 229. We're 
Target off block's time is 1750 Zulu, although we probably won't make that. And then 1855 is expected on block's time. So a very short flight. Uh, expected 131 miles over the ground. Uh, takeoff weight expected 21.8 tons. Uh, alternate is NTAA. Uh, cruising flight level is going to be 170, although I might reduce that myself just to about probably 110, something like that, just to reduce the workload a little bit for the flight today. Uh, trip time is going to be 37 minutes, and if we need to divert in the event uh, at arriving, after arriving, uh, 31 minutes for a diversion, 1.554 tons of block fuel. Uh, expecting runway 11 here at Bora Bora on the uh, hotel hotel November 3 alpha departure, and then expecting arrival runway 12 at uh, Moria. Uh, we've got 67 passengers aboard, 1.6 tons of cargo. And then looking at the weather, weather's looking uh, very fine indeed. Nothing really too much to say about it. Very, very nice weather. 30 degrees temperature here, so very nice and warm. And no weather actually available at Maria, so that could be interesting for the arrival when, you know, sometimes Microsoft flights and the other likes to make up the weather when it doesn't have the, uh, the meta. So that'll be interesting. Uh, the route itself takes us basically uh, to the southeast uh, from Bora Bora over this uh, extended patch of sea um, to uh, to Moria, obviously a little archipelago of islands here as well. Uh, nothing on significant weather charts. We do have something to the west here, but that shouldn't really affect us for the flight today. Um, and uh, the winds uh, looking like we've got uh, quite a bit of a, a crosswind or some crosswind for most of the trip today. And uh, probably a crosswind on arrival as well, but we can't see the meta, can we? Um, so there we go. That is the OFP for today. We'll brief the charts in full once we get underway. Um, but let's get started here with the pre-flight. 1825 gusting 25 knots. Where did it say that? Was I missing something? Oh, you're looking at the uh, the alternate, destination alternate. Uh, yeah, it looks pretty windy there. <clears throat> Normally we'd brief the alternate, but today I'm just cutting a few corners just for simisms because we know we're not going to have to divert here. It's very unlikely. So, um, yeah, just a few little little corner cuts here to for the sake of the stream, for the sake of the simism. Um, so, right, let's crack on with the pre-flight then. So, essentially, I have done a bit of swatting up on the procedures, but um, there's no way I'm going to be remember able to remember them all off by heart. Um, you know, this is the first time I've, I've flown this. I've only really read through the, the manuals and things like that, so I'm not going to be able to remember it by heart. So I have got it on the screen next to me. Um, so let's go ahead with the pre-flight procedures then. So... Um, starting on the left, we're going to go up, 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 up. Um, so dome lights is uh, not required, actually. So we'll turn that off. Uh, standby compass is off. Storm light is off. Wipers are off. That's fine. Minimum cabin lighting is actually on. We'll turn that off. Um, fuel pumps are off. That is fine. We can test the fuel pumps and the cross feed. So I believe the procedure is turn the pump on to run. Feed low pressure disappears and then turn on the cross feed. Feed low pressure disappears on the right hand side as well. Um, and then we would go ahead and turn the cross feed off and the pump off. Now, I believe in the real aircraft, it's a little bit slower to respond than that, at least from the videos that I've seen, but I may be wrong about that. Fortunately, we have actually got an ATR pilot in the chat, so maybe he can comment on some of those, Mohammed. Uh, Daniel, the price is uh, just over £16, and uh, if you're premium deluxe, you've got it's just over £10, so very, very cheap. Are the pilot seats movable? They are not, no. Did Microsoft make this? It's actually made by Hans Hartmann, the same person who developed the ATR. Um, but it's published by Microsoft. And then we can test the, uh, the right pump here and the crossfeed again, so... Again, very quick to respond, I think. And I think Mohammed will concur with that. 
Right, so that is checked. Uh, checking the doors. Uh, we've got some doors open at the moment. That is fine and normal. Landing gear three greens down. Uh, TLU is in auto. MFC's no fault lights. That's good. Uh, and then we can test the fire test here as well. I feel like some of the sounds are coming from... Chat, what is going on here? Some of the sounds are coming out of a, a different speaker on my computer, but... The fan sounds are coming through my earphones. You guys can hear the fan sounds, right? Yeah, you can. But the, the bings... They're coming out of a different audio device. What the hell? <laughs> uh, so it must be outputting the um, the bings and whatnot out to this one here, which is interesting. Uh, so for this one, we'll stick it to this device and hopefully that should fix it. There we go. Okay, you, so you guys can hear those now. Great. Very nice. Right. Cool. Okay, so... Um, We'll test here, and then we can also check down here for the correct indications, which they are. So we'll let go of that, and that's a good test. Uh, in terms of lighting, um, see which way around these switches are. I can't quite tell. Is that on or off? That is on. Okay, so that's on by default. Nav lights are on by default. The beacon light is on by default as well, interestingly. Is it? It is, yeah. That's rather strange. So, beacon light come off. Uh, we're just going to have the nav lights on. We don't need the logo lights either. And it's very difficult to see those switches, but that's fine. Uh, prop brake is, um, is off. That's fine. We're going to leave it off for now, although it is ready. So, that is good. Starter is off. No lights here. That's all good. External power on. The DC generators are off. That is fine. Bus tie connector is closed. That's all looking good. Battery is main. Everything else looks fine up here. All good. We can test the CVR. I'm not sure we're getting any indications there. Or maybe the, the dials are just really, really... Does that even work, that test there? Not sure if that test is actually working there, chat, to be honest with you. Um, right, so signs, uh, emergency exit lights can go to arm. We'll get the seatbelt signs, well, not on yet because we haven't refueled. No devices can go on there. There's no bings, though, unfortunately. <laughs> I don't know if that's true to the real aircraft, though. If we go into... In fact, we won't be able to hear the sounds there, will we? So, we'll leave that off for now. Anyway, de-icing is all off. All lights are on. Oh, that's fine. All looks good there. Cool. Probe heat is off. Windshield heat uh, is... I believe that should stay off for now. No, that should be on now. So we'll turn that on. Although we've got a fault light. That's fine. Anyway. Not sure if there should be a fault light there or not. But nevertheless, we'll leave that on because that is the pre-flight procedure here. AC wild gens are both off. Now, I'm not sure if these DC generators and the AC wild generators should be in the on position and just displaying fault rather than being off. I'm fairly certain these should be turned on as part of the pre-flight procedure. There should be fault light on. Yeah, I thought it would be that way. Right, cool. So that's all checked. Um, AC wild electrical power. There is external power available for the AC wild as well. Um, now, this is not actually listed in my uh, flight prep list here. But I suppose we might as well use it, seeing as it's available. That's fine. Good. 
Right, carrying on. Hydraulics uh, should be set to on also. That is all checked. It's very similar to an Airbus chat because you want to get the... You basically want to extinguish all of the all of the white lights. Probes and windshield heat should be off until before takeoff. Ah, okay. Yeah, so I'm just looking at the flight crew training manual here. And it says probes heating check off. Windshield heating check on. That's all I'm going by. So we'll turn it off anyway because you're the pilot. <laughs> um, right. Hydraulic power is checked. Then we can do uh, ELT. We do not actually test that as far as I'm aware. Uh, so we'll carry on down here. Enunciator lights will set to test. That looks like that's all working fine as well. Very good. Very nice. Very good. Very nice. Okay. Cool. So, that can go back to bright. That's all checked. Air bleed. Fault lights are all on. That's fine. Everything looks good here. It's 27 degrees in the cabin, though. So, that is looking pretty toasty. We'll have to get the engine started in hotel mode momentarily to, to bring that temperature down. Oxygen main supply is actually off, chat. So, what I actually noticed is you can actually test these already. Even though the oxygen supply is off, surely that should not be a thing. But anyway, we carry on. <laughs> that was the same in the CRJ as well. Copy boat smoke uh, detection test as well. That is good. Cool. And then, oops, fire loop test as well. That's all good. Someone was commenting about the no text on there. You can see it, it, it lights up when you can see the text when the button's lit up. Although it does look a bit janky. I'm not sure if that's real, uh, like the real aircraft or not, though. So that's that done. Great stuff. Cool. So coming down to the pedestal then. Uh, ATPCS. AT. PCS static test. Now, this is the um, auto. Nah, I mean, let me see if I get this right. It's the automatic takeoff power. Oh, God, I've completely forgotten this now. Automatic takeoff power control system. Possibly. Jet Fighter, thank you very much for the sub. Uh, Panagiotis, thank you very much for the subscription. Information Alpha, Aaron, Christian, Andy Black, House, thank you all for the subscriptions, guys. If you're new to the channel here, um, we do stream three times a week, trying to replicate realistic procedures as best as possible on our flights. Today is a bit different. It's a new aircraft, so it's, yeah, there's some things to learn. Um, but uh, yeah, we're going to try and do it as realistic as possible. Automatic takeoff power control system. Very good. Yeah, so I got it right. Fantastic. Love to see it. Right, so let's test that. Oh, that closes on its own. Very good. So that's the static test. On the last flight of the day, you would do a dynamic test where you do it with the engines running, stopped at a gate. Right. That test is okay. Good, good. I assume this is for the printer here, which doesn't work. Right. Lighting is set to bright. That's good. Flood lights uh, will leave off. Um, copy voice recorder will turn ground control on, which doesn't appear to be powered just yet. Right, that's good. And then we could test the trims as well. I'm not going to test the trims because it's always very fiddly in a flight sim. But we 
we know they're going to work. You would test the trims at this point. Uh, coming further up, um, we've got the controls for the MFD here. That's all fine and all good there. Now, I think the layout of this, this flight deck is slightly different to the one for the flight crew training manual that I'm reading because some things are slightly out of order. Um, but uh, nevertheless, Gus Lock is on. Idle gate is pulled. That's fine. I believe there should be a red or a yellow cuff on the idle gate as well to show that it's been pulled. That doesn't appear to be modeled. I'm fairly certain that should be there. Um, condition levers are in fuel shut off. Guys, if you want to join, don't invite me. Um, I will invite you once um, once you've put your name in the uh, in the separate chat there. Right, so condition levers are in fuel shut off. Power levers in ground idle. Idle gate is pulled. Parking brake is set. Flaps are in zero, zero degrees. Good, that's fine. Right, so next to the center pedestal, power management is takeoff. All the lights are out. That's good. Um, test the eyes detection. That's a good test. And the APM. Good. All working very nicely there. Stick shaker is uh, guarded and the light is off as well. Good. Uh, EC's both or uh, lights are off. ATPCS is off. And the button should be pushed in as well. As opposed to off like that. Good. Anti-skid test. Good. Landing gear three greens. Gear lever is down. Landing elevation is not. We're not actually able to set that at this moment in time. So mode selector should be pressed in. Not sure why there's no light on that. Surely there should be a light when that button is not pressed in. Filippo, welcome to the chat. Gio, welcome to the chat. Hope you're doing well. Welcome indeed. You have to press ground control switch before testing CVR. Oh, I see. Well, interesting thing is the ground control doesn't appear to do anything either. Let's test it again and see if that actually does do something. No, it still doesn't seem to work. I mean, obviously, that's not something in the sim that is really that relevant for a flight simulation. So perhaps they've decided not to to model that part. Um, right. Uh, so cabin mode, cabin pressure mode selector is pressed in cabin pressure rate knob should be in normal now again this i don't think is correct here there should be a green line on the cabin on this mode on this selector here there should be a green line indicating that it is in normal cabin pressure rates which is also interesting Interesting. Hmm. Can actually set. I wonder if this has got automatic um, cabin pressurization then, versus the one that I've been looking at. Interesting. Right. Well, we'll 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 find out, won't we, chat? Right. Carrying on. Uh, coming down here. Uh, we've got the weather radar here. Let's put it into test. See if that works. It does work.
Hey dog, any idea where the TCA throttle doesn't work? Uh, mine is working fine for me. Um, but make sure you go into the um, throttle setup here in the EFB. Make sure you've got that set up properly. Oops. Oh, my keybinds are all over the place for this aircraft chat. Usually my keybinds are much better. In NAMS, there isn't a green arc. Okay, got you. So it's this, this variant of the aircraft that doesn't have the green arc. Okay, fair enough. Fine. Got you. Got you, got you, got you. Good, good, good. It doesn't recognize your throttle. Right. Well, you probably need to play with the throttle assignment. So in your controls options here, real quick, um, you'll need to go into... I don't have any of my practically anything bound through Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'm using spad.next. Um, but you'll need to just go in here and you might, you'll need, might need to test whether it might be this throttle axis you need to use or this one. I can't, I'm not sure which one it will be. I'm pretty sure it'll probably be this one for this aircraft and not, and not this one, but you might need to just test and, and, and see which one works for you. Like I say, I'm using spad.next for my assignments. So, um, um, yeah, it's, it's not, it's not quite the same for me. Right. Okay. <clears throat> Where were we? Cockpit door is open. That's fine. I wonder if surely this light should light up when the Yeah, it does. Great. Love to see it. Very good. Very good. We'll tilt the radar up a little bit. Um, obviously, it's off now. Interested to see if that works. Doubt it will, but nevertheless, we'll see how we get on. Um, right. So coming down here, uh, speed selection is should be in automatic. We'll put that there. That's good. Um, Q and H. I'm just going to set with the key bind here. Which is apparently 1013. So that is fine. Uh, tours is normal. Everything else is looking good here. No issues at all. And we've got some lighting as well. Which we'll have a look at when we are in the air. And then back over to this side. All looking good there. This, I guess, changes regard depending on what you have set. It syncs up with this side. I'm not sure why this has cell though. And this one doesn't. Interesting. Right, cool. I think that is the pre-flight done. Good, right. Oh, we've not checked down here, have we? So nose wheel steering is actually on. Um, I don't think we're going to do a pushback today, chat. We'll, just for a bit of fun, we'll try and do a power back. So we'll leave the nose wheel steering on. Um, in terms of down here, everything looks good. What is this one right here? Okay, brake accumulator, hydraulic pressure monitor. That's good. We'll leave that on. Electrical indicators, they all work nicely. Very good. So we're on external power, we'll leave it on that for now. And warning, we can leave in uh, normal flights and run the test there. Which is not doing anything to my knowledge, but nevertheless, we'll open the document door as well. It is actually in the procedures to leave this open for the flight setup until the until the engines are started. And then on this side, everything should be guarded and uh, set correctly. So that's all looking good. We've got a bunch of other tests here, but we're not going to do those. Right, cool. I really need the toilet chat. I'll be back with you in just one moment and uh, we'll continue on.
Right, we're back. Okie dokes. Mammoth is in the CB panel behind the FO side. There is a switch called CLDS. You have to turn that on to power the cockpit door to lock and unlock from the center pedestal. Got you. Okay, we'll have a look at that in a sec. Does the weather radar in the Phoenix work? It doesn't, Ollie, no. Uh, how do you get a refund for a PMDG? Um, uh, I'm not sure, to be honest, Gio. I'm not sure if you can. Right, okay. So, that is the um, initial cockpit prep complete, I believe. Let's see if we can find the old... Uh, CDLS on the on the circuit breaker in the CV panel behind the FO sides. Um, um, here we go. It's not model, but it's 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 on permanent. So yeah, I can't actually click that, but there we go. It is on. Right, cool. Thank you very much for that, Mohammed. Right, okay, we're looking good. Um, we're going to assume the flight instruments are all correct, which they uh, they should be. Everything's reading, reading good to me. Okay, fine. I'm trying to, you know, make the setup a little bit briefer when I can chat, because I know, I mean, I'm itching to get it started personally. <laughs> Um, okay, cool. So then, final copy preparation. Uh, Packing brake is engaged. Brake pressure indicator we've checked. Uh, fuel quantity, we're not refueled yet. We'll do that in a moment. Um, in fact, we'll do that now so that we can complete this checklist. Right. So we'll go to payload. And we need to now work out how to, uh, how to actually uh, get stuff in here. So empty weight, crew weight, we don't want to amend. Payload weight. Um... Doesn't seem like we can actually click on anything here. Is it just going to be done through the default menu? Very interesting. Maybe they had to do that for Xbox purposes. So let's give that a test. So we want 1.5 tons of fuel. Now it's in liters up here, but we can see it through here. So it is changing something here, but for some reason it won't show me here. Interesting. So we'll come here then. I guess we're going to have to... Now oh, the fuel on board is, not, is still uh, not there. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Oh, you can actually toggle it to kilos now. I didn't... Actually, no, you could do that. Is this how you're supposed to do it, chat? Really? And the payloads. Surely you should be able to... Change these figures. Yeah, it should show zero until you set up MCDU. Yeah, that makes sense. Where did I get the checklist? I googled online for a flight crew training manual for the ATR. But you can use the checklist in the sim as well. Does it just let you do it in the F FMS? Surely not. Surely you do it through here. Is it scroll? No, it's not a scroll. Huh. Anybody have any idea how to change those? Because it would be nice to actually set, you know, some proper values rather than using 
this thing. And it would be good to actually see the zero fuel rate rather than just having to... Um, I mean, I suppose I can just use maths and calculate it, but I feel like it should... It should do it like that. Mark BC, welcome to the chat. Oh, you put them in the FMC? Right, okay, we'll go with that then. Cool, alright, so let's come down here then. Uh, we'll go FMS 1 on this side. This one should ask you to select FMS 2 as well, I believe, but it doesn't seem to have want to do that for us today. Um, right, all looks good, we'll go in it. Day and time are all looking good, fantastic. So, for when you're setting up this FMS chat, basically the flow is like this. Uh, I'm going to draw a pink arrow. You want to go down like this. So this one first, this one second. Sorry, one way around. Is that the wrong way around? Did I get that the wrong way around or the right way around? It's, it's like this, sorry. Like, like this. So pausing it, nav data units. And then on this side, you want to go... Wait, perf in it, and then fly plan in it. That's the flow in this aircraft. So we'll go pause in it. Now, from my reading, you don't actually want to use an in it in a position in here. You want to actually just leave it to work out its position itself based on the GPS. So I'm actually going to do that and leave that because it looks like it does seem to have... Mm, actually, maybe not. But we'll see how it gets on. We'll see if it actually... That it actually works in that way. Pause nav units, wait per fly plan. Yep, yeah. yep, yep, yep. Cool. So, pausing it, nav data. Okay, it just says current. That's fine. <laughs> Interesting, fair enough. And then units, we should not need to change. Kilograms, HPA, Celsius, feet, magnetic. Cool, all looks good. Now, weights. So, let's set our weights in here then. So, the fuel we want is 1554. And then the zero fuel weights we are expecting is 2489. Giving us a gross weight of 22043, which is about right. And then it's got the trim and the CG there. Lovely stuff. Reserve fuel, we're going to be uh, 848 kilograms. Right, let's see if it's changed anything over here now then. Crikey. Okay, so it has filled it out. Great. Okay, cool. So that's how you do it. That's actually... I mean... That's that's kind of... Kind of cool, actually, that... It just removes one step that you need to do. <laughs> so I can get on board with that. That's fine with me. Right, we'll go return. Um, now we'll go perfect. Cruising altitude is going to be... We're going to do a lower cruise here of uh, uh, flight level 110. Um, so I believe you can actually just set that with uh, with this guy here rather than typing it in. You can type it in, but you can also just go ahead and do it like this here. So that's what we're going to do. So flight level 110, that's good and set. I keep forgetting the key binds. Do apologize. Um, cruise mode max cruise is fine. That's fine with me. And alternate and alternate cruise out is going to be NTAA. NTAA. And altitude, flight level 150, but we'll, I mean, we'll do that a bit lower as well. Uh, one, three. Surely it should be an even going west. Right, fine, cool. So that is set. Oops, I did not mean to press that one. Okay, so perf in it, and then flight plan in it. Route. We're going from NTDB.
I put that in the wrong box. My apologies. Clear. NTTB to NTTM. And the flight ID. Victor Tango Alpha 229er as we briefed. Lovely. Execute that. Right, so. Expecting runway 1 1 here. One one on the hotel hotel November three Alpha departure. And we'll come here and just check that's gone in properly. Just gonna cross check here with the chart as well. So runway one one. Have to take off, turn left to intercept 096, bearing from uh, Bravo Bravo NDB to Hotel Hotel November Viewer. Uh, oh, there's multiple here, depending on your destination. Interesting. <laughs> uh, so that's fine. Uh, okay. Okay, we'll go with that. We'll go with that. We need to at or above four thousand at hotel hotel in November as well, which will we'll stick in there also. I'm surprised it didn't bring that in there itself, but um, hmm. and sorry, it's different different uh, syntax in this aircraft, isn't it? Four thousand or above. Executes. Good. Right. So that's that done. And then back to the flight plan from Hotel Hotel November. We're going to go direct to Tiano. And that's it, really. <laughs> that's the whole flight plan. So Tiano. Which, we'll cross check with the flight plan here, is uh, South 172. West 150, so that is that one. And we'll execute that as well. So that's good. And then for the arrival, we're expecting runway 1 2. We'll stick that in now um, because it is a short flight. I don't want to kind of uh, get too far behind here. So let's just go next page. And we'll set up for an RNAV 1 2. And, uh, and that's that. Cool. So. We do have a discontinuity there, but that is. No, we don't want that, so we'll remove that. Hang on a minute. Tiano has gone in above Hotel Hotel November. That is not correct. So we should be going Hotel Hotel November to Tiano. I'm sure that's what I just did. Yeah, it seems to keep putting it in above. <laughs> For some reason. And it's just put it in there anyway, even though I didn't click execute. That's a bit bizarre. Interesting. Now, <laughs> let's just see if I put it in here. Yeah. Okay. That's doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> I'm not 
I'm not sure that's the, the proper way to do things, but nevertheless. That's that done. So that's it for the um, flight plan. Um, I'll, I'll check the constraints here for the RNAV arrival once we are up in the air, uh, just to speed things through a little bit here. Um, right, okay, so uh, we've done all the FMS setup then, pretty much. Um, we'll check the perf page here for the takeoff. Um, we've got normal speeds in for non-limiting runway. Now, um, not a, I'm not a thousand percent sure whether this would be a non-limiting runway, but there is a calculator on here. God, right. Um, okay, so takeoff data. This is our speeds based on our current weight, I assume. So 112, 112, and 115. Um, so that's that's it. We don't need to put any custom speeds in there. So that's good. Um, you should be able to amend the speeds, though. Let's just try that, and it should change to manual speeds there. Yep, it does. Great. Okay, cool. Good. So we'll clear that out. That's fine. Good stuff. Right. So that's that done. Um, we'll go to the VNAV page now. I'll just use like 110. That's all fine. Okay, good. We don't need to set up the destination information just yet. Fantastic. Okay, good. So that's fine. I'm not sure it's entirely necessary to fill in the uh, the mean wind, etc., for such a short flight. Um, so I'm just going to leave that for your guys' sake, really. Um, cool. So progress page. Check the total mileage. 129 miles. Seems about right from what we briefed. That all looks good. Great. Okay, fantastic. Good. So we get the perf page and the flight plan page on this side. I'm just intrigued if we go menu here. For some reason, you can't go back to the menu on this right FMS. Hey ho. And it seems like the flight plan, don't, some of the buttons aren't working either. Some of the buttons don't work on this side chat. That is. Huh. It seems like only the line select keys work on this side. Very interesting. No, I can't share the flight crew chop train uh, operations manual, uh, Tiago. No, that would be... It's not for me to share. It's probably in breach of some copyright rules, but literally just Google it, Tiago. You can find it quite easily. Uh, De Grich, welcome to the chat. Bernardo, welcome to the chat. Earth Dog, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Patrick Volp, welcome indeed. Welcome indeed. Maybe in the future we can do uh, Pakistan from Islamabad to Skardu. Yeah, I mean, we've done that quite a few times on the stream before, but we'll most likely do it in the future again. Uh, Tau Swiss, welcome to the chat. Passengers in the cabin. There isn't any passengers in the cabin now, but there is a very nicely modeled cabin, to be fair. And it does look like the fastened seatbelts and no portable devices signs do work as well. Right, good. So, I think that is the uh, FMS setup complete, although I'm still a little bit perplexed by what is going on on this side. It's, yeah, a bit strange. I'm not sure that is entirely functional over there. Interesting. Okay, cool. If I go FMS2 here, does this... I mean, they should be linked together, right? But I wonder if it just kicks this one into gear. It doesn't seem to have done. Okay, fine. No worries. Right. Is there a secondary, though? That is a question. There is a secondary. Great. Okay, well, I'm not going to bother with that again for your sake today, chat, but obviously normally we would stick in a return to field in there. Um, so that's good that there's a secondary flight plan there as well. Okay. 
sure this was filled out previously. Hang on. Wait, what? Okay. We have a runway selected. Okay, it's filled it. What? I am so confused with what just happened, chat. I clicked on the perf and then the runway and the runway length was blanked out for a second. I went back to the flight plan and then back to perf and then it was filled in again. I'm so confused. Oh dear. Right. Okay. Well, we'll get in there anyway, chat. And it looks like um, everything is looking good regarding the alignment as well. We don't need to mess with the posinits. Okay, great. So let's just quickly look at our copy preparation so final copy preparation procedure packet brake engaged pressure brake indicator is checked uh, atis is obtained and takeoff data is filled fuel quantity is uh should be 1.5 tons which it how come we've used 480 kilograms of fuel we've not even got the engines on <laughs> hmm interesting uh, that being said, fuel on board is correct and checked. Uh, tanks are... Let's see here. So, there is some click spots on here, isn't there? Yeah, so you can do that to change the ND view, which is good. I believe there were some other click spots to change the... So, you've got ND, sys, map, perf... So if I go bottom left. That doesn't appear to be working correctly. Range seems to be working fine. That's good. Oh, it does. It's just the kick click spots are a lot smaller than I thought. So we've got takeoff data there. That's good. Oh, great. Yeah, so this is as opposed to using um, either this panel down here, chat, or this panel down here. So it's just a bit of a, a simism. Um, so that's all good. We were wanting to check the uh, fuel page, weren't we? So fuel tanks are balanced. That's looking good. Altimeters are set and cross-checked. Uh, VCP men memo panel. Uh, we've just got the fuel feed low pressure, which is fine. I'm fairly sure we should see... Let's hang on. Let's turn the seatbelt signs on. Get the fuel pumps on as well now. That's gone. I'm fairly certain we should see the seatbelt sign on there as well. Seatbelts and no devices, but it doesn't appear to be on there. But again, it might be this this system. Right, that's fine. Um, so bearing one, bearing two, range in and out format, left and right. Okay, good to know. Fantastic. And then you can do the same on this side as well, which is good to know. Um, that doesn't seem to be changing anything there. <laughs> right, okay, anyways, fine, let's carry on. Um, so you've got procedure menu, recall, clear, mandel, up, down, and validate, so. Oh, oh, it's actually really weird doing it like that. Oh, you've got the final copy preparation here. I'm actually going to use this because it's a bit, a bit weird doing it like that. Can't quite find the correct click spot, so that's up, but that's up and down. That's validate. So that's these guys. Yeah, okay, that would be very awkward otherwise, wouldn't it? And then developer mode we don't want open. Right, so that's procedure, that's clear. C 
proceed menu. And manual delete. That's Mandel. So I've just mucked that up, I think. <laughs> I'm not sure. Anyway, we were on final copy preparation, so that works quite nicely for us. Right. Final copy preparation. Parker break is engaged and pressure's checked. Altimeter set check. Landing elevation is, um, I believe, on automatic here. Still a little bit unsure as to... This is different, a different cavern pressurization panel to the one that I've, I've studied. Um, FMS comm nav is set. Uh, fuel quantity fuel on board is checked. Engine fuel used. Reset. Um, now, Mohammed, I'm going to ask for your help here. Where is the um, fuel f used reset in this aircraft? I tried to look everywhere for it in the... In the um, materials I've got to read, but again, I couldn't, could not find it. I would have expected it to be around here, but I just could not find it. Speedbird, welcome to the chat. Performance page on the MFD. Right, very good. We'll look at that in a minute. We'll look at it now, actually. Uh, so the performance page is here there we go reset fuel use great cool so that's it resets uh, memo panel is checked power management is in takeoff that's this here so that is complete procedure completed right good okay sorted so a couple of things i want to check let's just check the route first of all and make sure that is in properly So I'm not actually seeing any of my routes so far. Oh, this is just the airport view, isn't it? What am I on about? Okay, that's fine. I'm I'm on the wrong one, aren't I? I need to go over here like this. There we go. Cool. And the range was up here. Okay, that's good. Good. Okay, that all looks fine. Grand. Grand. Okay, good. So that's done. Just wanted to make sure that was in there. That's all, chat. Fantastic. Right. Okie dokie. These controls have thrown a whole spanner in the works here, chat. It's a little bit, a little bit funky, to be quite honest. Right. Okay. Yeah, it's a little bit weird to get used to that. Really, just trying to work that out. Okay. Good. Okay. So that's fine. Right, so before propeller rotation, we'll go ahead and just uh, run through that. Now, in fact, shall we just give a quick test to GSX? Let's see if, if some of it works at all with uh, GSX, shall we? Just for science. Have I looked at Magnar Nodal's real world ATR tutorials? I have indeed, yeah. I've been watching that, that channel almost for like the last one week non stop. Yeah. Um, not seeing any stairs come up, which is fine. Um, obviously, the aircraft isn't configured in GSX at the moment, but I'm not going to uh, 
waste your guys' time with configuring that. I think I think we're all ready to crack on now, aren't we? Really. So let's close the doors. We'll get the tail prop in as well. Service door can get closed. Um, we'll leave the chocks in and the ground power just for now and uh, we'll get uh, the engine started in hotel mode I think it would be the next step right so ready to start engine in hotel mode so the service door is closed fuel pump 2 is on wing lights are keybinds 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 Wing lights is on. <laughs> so difficult to see those switches. Uh, prop brake switch, we can go ahead and turn on now. Prop brake is noted as ready, so we'll go ahead and turn that on. Prop brake is blue. Right side area, check clear. All looking good out there. Fantastic. So we'll go for a start on engine number two then. Um, so I know I've read through a bunch of manuals and stuff here, chat, but one thing that I definitely can't remember, God, keybinds, is all of the, all of the um, engine limitation figures and things like that. So don't expect me to know those. All I know is you want to put uh, the condition lever from fuel shut off to feather at 10% NH. Right. Good. So, engine start selector, we'll go to start A and B. Texture on this looks a little bit bland, doesn't it? But anyway, just an observation. So, we'll go to start A and B. And we'll start to push button. Starter on. Oh, there we go. I'm looking at the wrong screen there. NH is 17.9%. Uh, Condition lever 2 to feather. NH is rising. Very quiet in here. Obviously, the prop's not spinning. NH over 45%. Start to push button off, which is already off. Okay, good. So that's all done in hotel mode now. I Everything is looking good. I I could have sworn we put the condition lever to auto, but I'm I may be wrong about that. But yes, start selector to off and abort now. And we should be able to get the power online. So We still have fault lights here, but I feel like they should not be there. I know external power obviously takes priority over the um, the inbuilt gens, but let's have a look here. So we'll bring up the power page, uh, the electrical page, real quick. Forgotten the forgotten the click spots already. <laughs> Right, so uh, sys page here. Okay, cool. Hmm. Gen 2 should be online and no fault light. That's what I thought. Maybe, hmm. I mean, external power is on. Let me see what happens if we turn it off. 
And on this side. Okay, so it's worked on this side. Fault light's gone out. So that's fine there. Um, engine 2 in hotel mode. I don't believe supplies AC wild anyway. So that's fine. And normal. Um, so that's good. We should have power and bleed air to the aircraft now. Um, engine 2 bleed. Cross valve is open. That's good. Great. And the temperature is coming down. Although the fans don't appear to sound any different in here. Um, but nevertheless. Um, that's fine. The recirculation fans are on. Okay. Fine. No worries. So that's that. Uh, done. We'll go ahead and get the external power disconnected now. Hello, close aircraft ground power and we'll get the wheel chocks out as well and let's just assume now we'll board the passengers I know we've closed the passenger door but um, now would be a good time normally to uh, to board the passengers um so yeah let's 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 press on then so before propeller rotation Cool. So, bear with me. I'm just going to bring up my other more explained uh, checklist here as well. Moment. Right, so before propeller rotation, CDLS. Now, again, that is not something I saw on the one I was studying and fairly certain I haven't seen it in this one either. So maybe Mohammed can, uh, can, can help me on that one. We'll check it on though. <laughs> FMS and takeoff data. Oh, look at this. The displays change dynamically depending on uh, what you have selected. That is really cool. FMS and takeoff data is confirmed. Trims are s not set. We haven't set the takeoff trim yet. So takeoff trim is 0 0.9 up. Um, so let's set that. I'm looking on the pedestal. It's, it's right here. Oh, it's already set. Okay. <laughs> Some things I think are happening automatically for me without me realizing here. So trim set, tail prop is on board, doors are closed, seat belts are on, and beacon light will go ahead and turn on in just a second before propeller rotation. Uh, checklist complete. Good. I'm not sure all these errors should be here. Um, I'm, I'm maybe wrong about that, but right. Okay, so here's our list. We can get that back now. Good, good, good. Right, fantastic. So before before propeller rotation is complete, so let's release a prop brake now. So ready to release prop brake. Uh, parking brake is set. Right side is clear. Hydraulic auxiliary pump push button we do not need to press because we do already have sufficient pressure. Prop brake off. NP is stabilized, so we'll go ahead and set the condition lever to auto so quiet in here chat low pitch I didn't see if the peck flashed on or not I don't know if any of you guys caught that but that should have flashed on momentarily when I initially did that but there we go it's so quiet
There she blows. Nice animations. Nice sounds. It feels quite quiet, but I may be I may be wrong. Right, so overheads, AC wild gen 2 fault light is off now, that's good. Um, AC wild bus tie connector is closed, that's good. Hydraulic pressure, uh, we can also check. Looking good, 3000 psi from the right side and uh, the left side, three th right, all looking good there, great stuff. Uh, probe heater can come on now. And the windshield heating, that's good as well. Anti-ice is not required, anti-skid we've tested already. Flap sleever uh, will set to... In fact, I'm doing the before taxi checklist. I need to start the next engine, don't I? <laughs> uh, okay, we start the next engine. <laughs> so start AMP and engine one starts. 10% on the NH here and the condition lever to feather. Looking for the MP to stabilize and then we'll go to auto. Have I forgotten the beacon? I'll turn the beacon on in a moment. I thought I'd turn that on. Right, MP is stable. We should get PEC 1 come on uh, in single channel and then low pitch display. There we go, single channel, low pitch. Good, good. Two hours and 38 minutes chat that took us to get the engine started. <laughs> That's how we roll, though, on this channel. We like to do things proper, you know what I mean? Right, good. So we'll continue with the before taxi. So recall. I forget where the click spot is for recall. In fact, it's probably down here, isn't it? Recall. Checked. Copy com hatch. We can close that now. Condition lever one and two automatic. They are anti ice is not required. TIU is on. And checked. Transformer rectify units. Anti skid test. Is performed. Flaps to 15 degrees. Let's go ahead and come down here. Can we see the flaps? There we are. 15 degrees. Decent animations. Turn on TRU. I've, have I missed? I thought I'd... I thought that was already on. Oh, okay. Good. Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry, I am reading this incorrectly. Good, 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 good. Okay, fine. Right, so flaps 15, flaps 15 is set. Okay, engine starts, selector back to off abort. 
All looks good. Temperatures are nicely coming down in the cabin. We've got no fault lights, no white lights overhead now. That's all looking good. Great. Okay. Nose wheel steering is already on. Good. Right. So flaps 15 degrees, nose wheel steering on. Four taxi check is complete. Lovely. Taxi checklist will do this now because it's only a very short taxi. And uh, let me just add some of you guys as well who uh, wanted to join the flight. So, uh, right, let's see who we've got. I don't see any of you who've put your names in here. They don't appear to be there. Lollipop 101, invite. Hypermark, Quizzy, I don't see you there either. And Bernardo, I don't see you there either. Maybe you guys got bored of me taking forever, <laughs> which I don't blame you for. Um, but if you do come online, I'll check before we take off and I'll, I'll get you added. Okay, good. And I've somehow gone on to emergency procedures by accident. Okay, before taxi is complete, taxi checklist. Taxi and takeoff lights will turn on. Good. Brakes, we can check as we start moving. FGCP slash FMA, let's set that as well before we forget, so... Climb up to flight level 110, that is set. Uh, automatic speed is set as well. Um, we're going to go for a... Uh, we'll go for indicated airspeed climb. And nav. Flight... Uh, that should be on FM2 and FM1. Good. This is the flight directors. And runway heading, of course. We'll set to one to two degrees. Actually, no, we'll not. We'll make sure we get the correct chart up first of all. So, one, one, two on the heading. Wow, these are slow. Good. Right. Fine. Fantastic. So we'll bring the ND back over here. Put the radar in standby. TCAS above. I'm a bit lost regarding the transponder, though. <laughs> I do have to say. I don't think we need to use that for this one. This is the ATR-72, Samuel. Press VNAV as well, if you think. I mean, there's there's no real constraints. There's just a 4,000 or above. Uh, I suppose let's try it. VNAV indicated airspeed as well. Is there no other way to get the flight plan other than manually? Um, I'm not sure. I've not tested any other way because we're only doing a ridiculously short flight, so... There's no real need to uh, to worry about that, in my opinion. But, yeah, I mean, it's something that I'll probably test in between flights. Uh, Thomas Rask is joining as well. Good.
Right, so FGCP flight, can flight guidance control panel, Mohammed. Uh, set and check to take off config test will perform as we start rolling on here. Cool, let's do it, chat. So, we can probably just turn left out of here, but I know you guys will probably prefer to see a power back. <laughs> so let's put on the parking... Let's put the tow brakes on and release the parking brake. Very strong reverse thrust. Very light on the brakes. There we go. Okay, cool. Let's pray the nose wheel steering axis works. It does. Oh no, the uh, quick views are a bit messed up, but we'll just use my analog stick instead. Oh, it rolls so quickly on idle thrust. Crikey. <laughs> the ground handling does feel quite nice, though. I do have to say. All right. Shouldn't it go to the next checklist automatically? Right, so before takeoff checklist, takeoff briefing, we shall do in just a moment. In fact, we'll do that as we hold at the runway here. It gives, gives a chance for people to catch up as well. just stop there right so just very quickly take off briefing again if you're new to the channel we always do a takeoff briefing um, or try to remember to at least anyway it should be fairly straightforward here so we're departing Bora Bora um, Motu Mute airport 10-9 we're looking at airport elevation 14 feet so we're departing runway 11 uh, heading is 112 runway length uh, 1505 meters so should be more than enough for the ATR Looking at the departure, we're flying at the uh, Hotel Hotel November 3 Alpha, which is based on the uh, Hua Hin VOR. Uh, 3 Alpha departure for all runways. Uh, transition altitude, 9,000 feet. Um, this stuff we can comply to, no problems. So we're not going to brief that. Uh, so we're initially going to fly straight ahead and uh, basically take a left turn to intercept the uh, 096 course inbound to the Hotel Hotel November 3 Alpha VOR. That is it. It's fairly straightforward. We need to be there at or above 4,000 feet, which we've already tuned into the MCDU. That's all looking good, and we've checked that. Um, so as you can see, it's after takeoff. Turn left to intercept 096, bearing from uh, Bravo Bravo NDB to Hotel Hotel November VOR or Hotel Hotel November uh, Hotel Hotel NDB at or above 4,000 feet. So that's that. We haven't actually tuned these guys in the nav radios as a backup. Um, but I'm not going to waste your time with that. We're just going to rely on the FMS and assume it's not going to break today. <laughs> which it should do. So um, yeah, that is the departure briefing. Let's do it, chat, shall we? If you land safe, I'm hiring you to my airline, definitely. <laughs> I would, uh, I would absolutely take that job, 100%, Mohammed. 100%. I appreciate the uh, approval there, though. Thank you so much, dude. <laughs> uh, what GPU are you using? My uh, specifications are in the video description, or you can type exclamation point specs in the chat. It's a 3080, though. Throttle, I'm using a TCA. Again, my hardware is in the video description. Uh, transponder you can find in the MFD after you press uh, serve button below MCDU. Got you. Oh, okay, perfect. So transponder one, and we've got it. I'll have it on. And, uh, oh, <laughs> how do I actually type uh, two thousand? I'm so used to using the touch screens now. It's uh, a little bit.
Okay, that is set. Lovely. Transponder uh, TCAS is set to auto. That's all good as well. Lovely stuff. Right. And that your nav radios are here as well if we wanted to uh, set those. But again, I'm not going to waste your time with that today. And it, to be fair, because we're not flying online, we could have, even have just the nav radios up, to be fair. Right. Okay. So we're pretty much ready to rock and roll. Let's do the before takeoff checklist. So takeoff briefing is uh, performed. Gus Lock will take off now. Flight controls will do a quick check of those. Full left, full right. Full forward, full back, full left on the rudder, full right on the rudder. Wonder what the rudder response is going to be like in this aircraft. Transponder TCAS is checked. Airflow is normal. Cabin crew advised. Engine bleed is as required. External lights will turn on as we enter the runway. Lateral flight director bar is... Uh, we'll center that as we line up as well as the uh, rudder cam. Before takeoff check is complete. Good. Right. We'll get the landing lights on and the strobe lights on as we're assuming we're clear for takeoff and we're entering the runway here. We'll release the parking brake and roll on in to the old uh, runway. I think I need to go onto the throttles here and just increase the idle tolerance a little bit. It still seems to be slipping into reverse a little bit. There we go. Good. We'll give the uh, terrain display a test as well in a moment. We didn't even really have a chance to check out this airport, did we, chat? <laughs> oh, we've left the cockpit door open, of course. not used to using this little joystick for my uh, looking left and right. Usually I use the quick views. The the ground handling does feel quite nice though. It does feel like it's got some inertia to it, which is something that you know, the, the CRJ definitely struggled with. Do we have anyone else that's joined us yet? It doesn't seem like it. How in the name of all that is holy and good in the world can you set up this with the Airbus Thrustmaster Quadrant on PC? So we discussed this a little bit earlier on, actually. Um, and I, I can't really show you right now. I'll show you once we lined up. Um, I'm using Span.next, though, to do my, um, my throttle setup. So it might be a little bit different to you, but I, I've, I think I've got some suggestions that might be useful to you. Check from outside, you can see the spoilers when you turn full left and right. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, this does have some pretty good uh, fixed camera views by default as well, which is nice. How realistic is this aircraft study? It's, it's, it's high detail. I would say so, but I mean, we haven't flown it yet, which is obviously one of the big deciding factors. <laughs> Chat. <laughs> Chat, I've come to the wrong runway end. I've come to the wrong runway end. What a nugget. Oh my days. The quick views are a little fugacious on this aircraft, so I'm uh, struggling a little bit to look around. If I press left quick view, it actually looks to the right. We might we might take off runway two nine here, chat. We might be able to to handle the uh, the tailwind, and we can just whip it round. Right, 
Right. Okay. So someone was asking about the throttles for the TCA. So if you go into your uh, throttle settings now, like I say, I'm using an external application to map my throttles. But if you look on here, um, throttle one axis, for example. So you've got two options. Now, I feel like in this aircraft, it's going to be this option. Like I say, I don't have it bound because I'm using external application. But if you have it set to this, try this one and see if that helps and then what you'll need to do is you'll need to make sure you come into the EFB here and go to throttle setup and make sure you um, make sure you set up the various different detents right okay so terrain display I did want to give a try here as well um, but I'm not actually 100% 100 sure um, actually how you show it um, unless it's down here yonder. See, on the again, on the aircraft that I've studied, there's a button somewhere close to the display. But in this one, it's probably th actually through one of these controls somewhere. Yeah, the transponder button. There we go. Cool. Right, so that's that. Right, fine. I'll tell you what we'll do on this side, just to test it. We'll go and set the um, weather radar to on. See if it works, shall we? It probably won't, but <laughs> hey-ho. Right, can we check the weather here and just see what the situation is? There's no meta currently. Okay, we'll check Microsoft Flight Sim meta. No meta available. Okay. <laughs> we'll just text to the other end chat. <laughs> I'm so sorry. We'll get a bit of a, a move on as well, shall we? Right, I'm so sorry, chat. It's taken so long to get set up. But obviously, I wanted to make sure that we did things properly. And, you know, the added benefit of doing things properly like that is you really get to see how actually, you know, how detailed the product actually is and whether it's sort of, you know, as detailed as we were hoping it would be. And we obviously get to see far more of the actual product itself rather than just slapping it on and just taking off immediately. Do you know what I mean? Put on notch for takeoff. We will do once we get lined up on the proper runway. Right, chat. So once we take off, we should hear a distinct pop from this idle gate right here. Once the weight comes off the wheels. Oh, the rudder's feeling quite, quite squirmy. Right, so once we take off, we're going to advance the throttle levers to the notch. Uh, upon rotation, we are going to pitch to 9 degrees initially. That should be directed also by the flight directors. <clears throat> we'll bring up the gear. Obviously, your damper then needs to come on, which is here. 
and then we'll get the taxi and takeoff lights off and ensure the gear becomes retracted. It sounds very nice though. I have got my volume cranked up very high here though, chat, so... Idle gate pops in after liftoff of main gear. Yep, yep, yep. Good, good, good. I'm so glad that I've actually managed to remember a lot of this stuff from my uh, my studying. I'm so pleased. <laughs> terrain radar doing its stuff as well there. You can see the area of high, ter high terrain off to our uh, uh, sort of... I can't think. Two o'clock position. Right then, chat. Shall we do it? Shall we get some... Can we get some fuzz togas in the chat? Obviously, we need to get our seatbelts on as well. Can't forget the seatbelts now, chat. I don't want to fall out my chair when I realise how bad I am at flying a plane. <laughs> right then, guys. Let's go. <laughs> there we go. We're in the notch. Airspeed is alive. Oh, I do like them sounds, though. It's eating a lot of this runway. There we go. There goes the uh, the idle gates. You might not have heard that chat, but it just popped. Right, positive rates. We've got LNAV, VNAV indicated airspeeds. It's quite hard to see the PFD, to be quite honest. Oof, a bit bumpy there. Right, acceleration altitude. Power management to... Climb. Target speed is now 170. Right, we're at the white bug. Speed is checked. Flaps up. Oh, I've not got the yaw damper in. <laughs> Get the AP in there. Just to unburden myself. 170 knots is the climb speed. Good. Look at that. Beautiful stuff. Oh, I've got to turn the volume down a bit now, though. It is getting a bit loud. 
shouldn't take my seatbelt signs off just seatbelts off just yet, should I? Right, that wasn't too bad, that departure. I can see the ET started for us automatically, which is nice. Good to see. Grand. Weather radar. There's no weather radar really to show, is there? Sorry, no weather really to show. I'm actually going to go ahead and put that on now because it's almost difficult. It's, it's very difficult to actually see where I'm going uh, with all this sea around us. Right, good chat. Good, good, good. So it feels quite good to hand fly. It's, it feels like a tiny bit squirmy. Um, I think I've got minus 30% set currently for my, um, for my, um, my side stick. I'm using a side stick for this. So yeah, I've got minus 30%. So it feels a little bit squirmy, but mostly it feels quite good to fly, to be honest with you. Um, to be honest, maybe as I would expect for such a small aircraft. Uh, MR Aviation, thank you very much for the sub. Liana, thanks for the sub. Anton, thank you very much for the sub. Miguel, Frank, Peterman, Jet Fighter, thank you guys all for the subs. And welcome here, guys, if you are new. I <laughs> I really don't get this many viewers that often. So I, you'll have to excuse me if I'm a little bit flustered today. A combination of a lot of viewers and a new plane. It's, it's quite a lot to, sh to do on stream. Um... <laughs> So I hope you guys um, at least are not totally sick of, uh, you know, how that went there. Because uh, I'm not going to lie. I did a lot of studying before the stream today. And I, I, I thought it was going to go a little bit smoother than that. I think just a little bit quicker, a little bit smoother. Do you know what I mean? So, um, yeah. Anyway, never mind. All good. All good. Cool. So after takeoff checklist then, let's do that guy. So after takeoff... Uh, landing gear is up, flaps are zero, power management is in climb. Uh, engine bleeds are... Well, they should be on. Oh, exhaust mode fault. Interesting. Interesting. Temperature's changing rather rapidly. Is that true to life, Mohammed? Uh, engine bleeds are on. Taxi and takeoff lights will turn off now as well. I like how that's just one switch. That's quite nice. I'm so... <laughs> I'm so confused with these keybinds. They make no sense to me. Uh, altimeters are set and cross-checked. We're going to obviously go to standard in a moment here. In fact, we'll go to standard now because we are... Well, we'll pass that, pass that transition altitude. So set standard, flight level 110, blue. Alt cell is blue. Good. Uh, 1,000 feet to go. Let's go VS 1,000. Flight level 100. Landing lights off. Seatbelts can come off as well. And we'll get the seatbelt signs off for the passengers as well. Let's check in here. Has the seatbelt sign gone out? Oh, it actually hasn't. Okay, so they don't work. That's just a light that shows. Oh, is that correct, actually? It's got a green little arrow. Yes. Uh, no. No, so they're just permanently on. Okay, fine. Never mind. And there's no bing. Right, okay. Coming up to level off. Alt star. And we'll put the power selector to cruise. Maybe did that a touch early there, but that's fine. Cool. All right, chat. Let's go. Oops. I really can't get used to this faux touchscreen behavior. 
Right, so only about uh, 70 miles to go till uh, top of descent, but uh, wow. Thomas Rask is with us there. Love to see it. Uh, there's Bora Bora behind us. Absolutely fantastic chat. How much is the ATR? Is it easy for someone who only flies PMDG? Um, I would say so, yeah, probably. I mean, obviously, with a new aircraft, it's just getting used to the layout and, uh, you know, the flows. But I think as an aircraft in general, it is quite automated and quite quite easy to to do. It's just obviously getting used to everywhere in the cockpit where, where everything is, basically, you know. Um, so... Um, so yeah, I mean, definitely, if you know how to fly a 737, I think you could probably fly this. Uh, what's your overall opinion I've been waiting? So, so far, I think... Let's, you have to remember here, chat, it is... The cost is so cheap. It's £16. Just over £16. Or with a discount, it's just under £11. So for that money, it is absolutely worth it. Um... I think there are some peculiarities with it, and I think Mohammed has also uh, pointed out and agreed with me on some of the, the peculiarities so far. But that being said, you know, it's just been released. I'm sure there will be updates to fix small little issues like that. Um, but I think overall it is, it is quite nice. Um, I'm a bit confused as to why this FMS doesn't seem to do anything at all, or the MCDU, should I say. Um, but overall, the texturing and modelling is quite nice. Um, and visually, it's a very nice product. It flies quite nicely. The autopilot seems to be functioning very, very well so far. Um, we're going to do an RMP approach um, into uh, Muria. So we'll see how it does with that. I'm very intrigued to see whether it will handle the RMP approach properly. Um, does it have sim brief uplink? It does not. No. Though I'm not sure if there is a way to do that. There might be uh, somewhere in in the folders, like with the CRJ, you can you can copy a file into into one of these folders here. But I'm not sure if it doesn't look like there is a folder there for it. See, in the CRJ, for example, there's a. Um, you can you can put your flight plans in here actually, so maybe maybe you can maybe you can. We'll have to give that a try for a, a future stream. But um, there's no direct uplink straight from the website, basically. Was that added to the fleet? What a nugget livery! <laughs> oh, I love it, Darren. I love it. We'll have to yeah. What a nugget! Yeah, that's the one. We're getting it. We're getting it done for the ATR. What a nugget! Thank you very much, Dave. Glad you think so. I'm glad you think so. <laughs> um, what's the normal cruising altitude? I think you got that answered there, Gabriel, um, by Mohammed, our ATR pilot in the chat. Um, I suppose it depends on the length of your route and the winds that day and um, uh, various other factors, but, you know, max cruise, flight level 250. Shuts, welcome to the chat. Hope you're doing well. I'm doing... Uh, yeah, good, thank you. How are you doing? Um, ATI, it's, it's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good. I was just saying there. You, I mean, you probably heard me say it. For the price, I think it's good. I think it is good. But, um, yeah, I mean, we, we're, we're, we've only just finished our first ever climb in it. So, you know, there's more to discover. And I think for the next stream chat, we're definitely going to get the cameras properly sorted. I'm a bit confused as to why mine's not worked here. Uh, but we'll get all the cameras sorted and, and it'll just be... Because I think that's that's one of the things for me whilst I'm doing the flows in an aircraft, especially a new one. You know, if the cameras are all over the place, like, for example, the Instrument View 1 is that. Okay, that's fine. Instrument View 2, that's a bit weird. Um, <laughs> like, that kind of throws me off a bit because you've kind of got half of the, the EWD here and half of um, the autopilot panel. 3 is that four is that which i suppose makes sense but again i i prefer to just do this especially considering this one doesn't work um but yeah the the, the key binds usually i mean they they've, they help me remember stuff i'm a very visual learner so having the cameras set up as i 
like them is is super super useful for me because it helps me you know just remember where everything is and get to it faster and it looks better for you guys on stream as well so yeah Uh, thank you very much, was uh, Thank you, dudes. Uh, you can reset exhaust, exhaust mode faults uh, faults after the smoke test. Ah, okay, okay. Mohammed, you're an absolute legend. I'm so pleased that you're here. Hang on, what's that though? It looks like that light doesn't work properly. Let's reset anyway. Taxi takeoff lights goes up with gear up, else the landing gear, <laughs> else 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 the landing gear bay catches fire. Crikey, that is extreme. I mean, I know in other aircraft, obviously you do that generally, but I don't think any other aircraft are at risk of having the nose wheel bay set on fire. That is a bit crazy, um, but you have to. I, I suppose you have to appreciate in the sim that. It's a bit difficult to reach that switch whilst I'm manually flying with my right hand. Um, so it's just a bit of a simism, I suppose. I wonder if it works with the key bind, actually. It doesn't work with the key bind, so I'll have to try and... I think what I might do is I might set it so on spad.next, once I raise the landing gear, that this will also get switched off as well at the same time. It's, yeah, I think that's probably a good idea. Uh, Dio, welcome to the chats. Welcome, welcome. Uh, what's that on the left? What is it you're referring to on the left there, Urge, Urge Panda? The EFB? Or something else? So, I think the real question, though, is what do you think, Mohammed? So, Mohammed in the chat is an, a real-world ATR pilot. What do you think? Not to my procedures, of course, but <laughs> what do you think to the aircraft from what you've seen? Do you think it, it fits the bill? Have I managed to assign the parking brake? I have, yes, Fly Tim Sim. I used a LVAR to do that in spad.next. Uh, can I show the cabin? I can, yes. Pretty nice cabin, honestly. Nicely detailed. Look at the stitching on here. That's super nice. And look at my FPS, by the way. Top right. Of course, we are flying, you know, we are flying over water at the moment. So that's something to consider, but. The screen's heating. Oh, is that what you're referring to? These guys here. Got you, got you, got you, got you. So you have strange black shadows outside the left window pillar. Oh, these. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. So that's... that's. Yeah, as people said, that's the... Um, I mean, it looks like it's the heating elements to me, but it... Yeah, it is. Look at that. There you go. If you get to the right angle, you can sort of see... Yeah, you can sort of see it's the, the window heat there. How do you calibrate your throttles in the EFB, uh, Roger? Using the options page throttle setup in there these reflections really need to do they really need to go though don't they chat look at that <laughs> uh, what is even going on there is it a guy like flying a Cirrus aircraft with like a big pile of money on him Guys, if you've enjoyed the stream so far, please do consider hitting the thumbs up button. It really does help out the stream. And um, yeah, thank you all for being here. It's absolutely wild having so many people in the chat. It's very much not used to it, but 
Uh, I'm pleased you're all here, and I'm hoping you've enjoyed the procedure so far. Um, looking forward to landing in um, a place where I keep forgetting the name. Um, Moria. Um, which reminds me, we should probably go ahead and do a bit of a briefing for the arrival, shall we? Okay, so let's have a look, sees. Cool, so let's have a look then. So, bringing up the fuzz pad, uh, you can see the fa final fix on our flight plan here is Tiano. Uh, we're not flying any of the uh, stars here at Maria because there aren't any. So, we're basically going to come from uh, Tiano on a vector. Uh, into our final approach fix here, or initial approach fix here at, at Morney. So let's just have a look at the briefing the approach. Hey Dave, thank you so much for the 999 super chat. Much appreciated, my friends. That's a very kind of you. Thank you so much. I like the little Superman guy as well. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> do I use FS realistic? I do. Yes. Uh, Liana, welcome to the chat. Hope you're doing well. Panel on the top of screen not working. Oh, thank you very much for that uh, alert. Last, that's, that'll be sim, sim Toolkit Pro here. Let's just reconnect it to the sim. There we go. Very good. Right. Cool. So let's have a look then. So this is the arrival. It, sorry. Let me just get my words out properly. So we're going to be arriving into Maria Deme Society IS. We're going to be flying the RMP for runway 1-2. Uh, this is a 12-1 sheet. Uh, this is an RNAV approach. Final approach course is 1-2, two, 2 degrees. Uh, the final approach fix is at Foxtrot Tango Mike 1-2. Mandatory 2,100 feet. Uh, and the MDA here, 1,120 feet. Airport elevation, 16. And the runway elevation, 1,3. MSA is highest in the southeast uh, at 9,000 feet, which reduced to 5,600 within 15 nautical miles. Um, so it's an RMP approach. Um, this is really the only option here other than an NDB. So we're going to try an RMP. Um, so it's going to bring us in via morning. Mandatory 2,100 uh, 2, feet there, uh, leading us to Foxtrot Tango Mike 1, 2, which is our final approach fix. Uh, and then we're going to descend at 3 degrees um, down to MTM 1, 2. So this final leg here is a total of 9.9 um, .9 miles. So as we come in towards morning, we'll aim to be uh, flaps 15. I think, and then once we pass through uh, Morney, we'll go flaps 35, I think it is, and then gear down uh, as we approach the uh, the top of the glide path here. Um, I think that's probably an okay procedure, but I think probably best to get configured earlier rather than later with a new aircraft like this. Um, and then from Mang uh, Mike Tango Mike 1-2, um, sorry, I forgot to brief this bit earlier. From Mike Tango Mike 1 2, we do have a visual section there, uh, which is 3.3 miles long. So, um, need to fly visually from there. Um, MDA, we've already briefed 1 1 2 0. And if we need to go around, it's uh, a left turn at Mike Tango Mike 1 2. Uh, direct to F Tango Mike 4 1 0, then Mosma. Climb up to 2100. Acceleration level not studied. Uh, transition level, we'll assume it is flight level 100 for this particular instance because we don't have any ATC online. And then once arriving at the airport, we'll just have a quick look at the taxi. It's not going to be too difficult for us to work out here. We're just going to leave the um, leave the runway either Bravo or Alpha and taxi to the stand. That's really about it for the taxi in. Um, so nothing too crazy there. Uh, we do have a Pappy, uh, which is calibrated 3 degrees for the approach, which is good. And uh, perfectly fine for us. Great. Cool. So let's make sure we've got everything set in the box properly so obviously for an RMP approach we do need to make sure we've got some uh, some of the details in there let's just see we are coming up to top of descent here so let's just wind the altitude selector down a little bit here and we'll start a very shallow descent at 500 feet per minute and you can see we've got the vertical profile there 
And to be fair, we can probably just engage LNAV. Uh, sorry, VNAV, roundabout now. Let's just go VNAV, really. Okay, that's going to give us VNAV alt. Interesting. It's probably because I've not passed through the top of descent yet, though. There we go. VNAV path had a bit of a weird uh, jolt when it intercepted the path there, which is a bit strange. We've also got a uh, pitch hold now and we're over speeding. Interesting. Okay. So let's just um, bring the power back a bit here. Okay, good. We'll get the music turned down. Right, cool. So we'll set all the way down then. 2,100. Good. Right. 40% power for the descent. Okay, fine. Thank you, Mohammed. Bit difficult to set in the sim, but we'll get there, there, there or thereabouts, shall we? And we seem to be paralleling the vertical path here, so I'm going to go back to vertical speed here for a moment. Okay, now I've gone above it. <laughs> right, there we go, VNF path. And we're still increasing on speed there. Target speed has come back now, though, which is cool. So, target speed's come back now. Um, so, I'm, I'm sure we should just be able to put it back in the notch, surely. And then it'll come back to that speed on its own. Let me just test. Just for science. No. Okay. <laughs> right. So, let's just check what we needed to check. So, Morny. Um, let's see. 2100 or above. Foxtrot Tango Mike uh, 12. 2100. That is in and checked. That's all good. That's what we wanted. Fantastic. Okay. So that's that. MDA we want to set 1120. Slowly does it. 1120 set. Good. Uh, we have passed through the um, transition level as well. So we'll go back to um, local altimeter. Which I'm just going to set with my keyboard shortcut. Because we don't have a meta available at our rival airport here. Um, so that's that set. Good. Are you enjoying flying the ATR 72600? I am, yes, yep. Right, let me just finish getting set up for the arrival here then. So let's do our descent checklist. Uh, recall. Oh, there is a way to get recall, isn't there, without actually going to the buttons. Recall is bottom left. Okay, I'm pretty sure, I think I just pressed it and I guess there's nothing. Right, good. Recall is checked. Landing of elevation. Now I'm going to assume because this is not my, this is FMS, you see. This button is FMS landing elevation. So that is, should be set. We could check that on the pressurization page, I'm sure. Auto pressurization. Okay, that's probably then on the uh, FMS. We'll need to check that. So we'll come back to that. 
FMS nav perf. Let's go down here. We do want to set our landing performance. Um, so that is set. Transition altitude. I mean, we're already way through it, but let's just do it just for the sake of it. Q&H is 1014. And then the winds is taking from the live winds. That's fine. Approach speed is activated, so that's good. Vertical profile is looking good as well. Speed is coming back nicely, actually. That's looking good. Right. Okay, so that is set. MDA is set. Arrival briefing is performed. Good. Before landing checklist, we'll come back to momentarily. Try to see our our landing if if there's an area where it's showing the that it's recognised the uh, elevation of the arrival airport, but I can't seem to find it there. But nevertheless, I'm pretty sure we're running out of time here to check. So look at that weather uh, weather radar. It does appear to be working. Chat. Look at that. VNAV pass going a little bit crazy here. Right, so we're at morning. Let's go to flaps 15. Speed is checked. Flaps are set to 15. Let's arm approach as well. We're assuming we're um, cleared for the approach. Hmm. Doesn't appear to be allowing me to arm approach here, actually, which is concerning. It should do. Oh, there we go. Vertical flight path. Interesting that it didn't let me arm it, but nevertheless. Right, okay. We'll go gear down. Speed's coming back nicely. We'll go to flaps full. Speed is checked. Fine. Lovely. So before landing, check this cabin crew advised. Landing gear three greens. Flaps checked. Uh, flaps 30 is set. Power management will set now to take off. TLU low speed. Um, I feel like I'm I've completely forgotten where I'm looking for that. Right, so let's just make sure we're controlling the power here. <phone rings> Icing angle attack light as required. External lights we've not actually turned on yet. So landing lights, taxi takeoff lights on. And that should do it. Seatbelt signs obviously as well. I definitely missed a few things there, chat. But let's do it. Right. We're at our final... That missed approach point now. Autopilot disconnected. Uh, we probably want to have the flight directors off as well. So let's get the yaw damper off and the Approaching minimum. flight directors off, which I'm not actually 100% sure how to do but nevertheless we're going to fly on here Minimum. minimums continue runway is in sight let's land this sucker chat let's get a replay recorded as well till you low speed above the flap indicate on the engine speed right good 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 oh yes it is yeah I'm so blind <laughs> It feels very stable, though, I have to say, chat. Very, very stable. Flight director's there. I'm so blind. 
call outs are sounding good as well with three reds sorry three whites now oh it's got the the trim sound as well when it runs for too long just trying to record a replay chat here i'm not trying to get high fortunately this thing is really quite nice it's uh controlling the speeds We don't look like we're four whites, do we, chat? Two hundred. Love the call outs. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Oh, it's very sensitive. Ten. Oh my god, that actually stops so quickly. Crikey. <laughs> Pappies are wrong, yeah. I'm pretty sure they were wrong now, yeah. Right, well, welcome, guys. That probably that wasn't the most glamorous landing in the world, but my first landing, nevertheless. So not too bad. <laughs> Crikey! Right then, chats. Lovely stuff. I don't know what that landing rate was, but it didn't feel particularly good. But nevertheless, feel free to put your uh, predictions in the chat. This is another. Um, this is another custom airport that Orbex have done for a Sobo for the world update. Oh, 532 over here. Crikey. <laughs> is LNAV working yet? Yeah, LNAV works quite nice, actually, I think, to my. From what we've seen today. VNAV working quite good as well. ATR approved my landing. Hey. <laughs> I will take that, Mohammed. We're going to put that up on the screen there as well. <laughs> oh, no. Thomas Rask is coming in. We better get ourselves off the runway real quick here then. Um, right. Idlegate. Oh, it's up, popped out on its own. Okay. Very good. I'll take that. Now, I believe normal procedures in an ATR, you would normally shut down one engine, I believe, on the taxi in. But we're not going to do that here just because of the complexity of um, trying to keep my eye on my taxi whilst uh, uh, yeah, whilst doing other things. Nevertheless, we'll get the landing lights off. Sam, welcome to the chat. Auto land. I'm pretty sure this aircraft does not do auto lands. Stian, welcome, dude. Welcome. Right, we've recorded that landing chat, but we're not going to. Uh, we're not going to. Well, we might watch it back, actually. Let's see. Who wants to see another flight, though? That is a question. Shut down engine one after two minutes of landing. Got you. Got you. Well, I'm just <laughs> just trying to uh, not get distracted from the taxi in at the moment. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll just I guess we just shut it down once we get in. You want to see another flight? Okay, good, good. Well, we'll do the return leg then. We'll do the return leg. 
let's come into this stand here, which has got some nice ground crew waiting for us here. Although they definitely look like they're in the way. <laughs> I'm so confused with these keybinds, like pressing right to go left. It's so confusing. And we're going to miss Thomas Rast landing as well. Oh, it's so confusing. Oh. His foot. <laughs> this guy's facing the wrong way. This taxiway is a little bit wonky as well. We're just going to have to ignore this guy. He's probably going to get bumped a little bit by my, uh, my nose. And he's definitely going to feel quite a heavy dose of radiation as my weather radar is still on. <laughs> Let's just call it good there, and uh, we'll um, <laughs> get the weather radar off, and uh, hopefully he doesn't turn into a uh, pickled human. <laughs> right, okay then. So, um, turning off the engine is just a case of going fuel shut off, I think. Good. Good, good, good. Let's leave the right engine on, but we can go ahead and go. Prop brake. Um, I'm pretty sure we can just bang the prop brake on, can't we? So we push this guy. Or not. Maybe I need to do something. Oh, I need to put it into feather first, don't I? I also need to get the flaps up. Beacon light can stay on for now. Is it still spinning that? It is. Prop break. Help me out here. Alright, let me just <laughs> let me just check the uh the, the checklist here because I think I'm missing something. Right, so we've obviously landed after landing. Flaps lever zero. Gus lock we should have already put in. Get that in now. Flight controls check locked. I'm going to assume they are. Transponder is as required. We'll set that in a minute. Trims are reset. Well, we'll assume they are. In fact, we'll just go. Hey, it's got the sound. Trims, weather radar, standby, FC, F, G, C, P. I've already lost where that one is. There we go. Prop brake is ready now. Prop brake. Cool. Great stuff. Um, oh, also, let me just interrupt my process here. I realized I missed Mohammed's response regarding whether it fits the bill or not. Let's see. Manta Airways. Very good. Very nice. In the Maldives. Very nice. I bet you're used to flying a lot of RMP approaches then. Right. I'm fairly certain you did respond to me when I asked... Yeah, so it fits the bill. I think it's awesome for the price. It's like 80 to 90% complete. Some space to improve, definitely. Taxi light switch and landing light switch is in the wrong order. Taxi light should be to the left and landing light should be in the middle. Got you. Got you. But I mean, the price is it's so difficult to complain, isn't it? At that price.
Uh, Pablo, thank you very much for the sub. Sam, thank you very much. Toma, thank you very much. And Gerard, welcome to the channel, guys. Welcome indeed. Welcome indeed. On the autopilot panel. So I guess we... Stand by. That's what we do? Really? And it gives you pitch hold, low, roll hold. Maraca, welcome to the chats. Right, let me just finish the procedures here. Anti-ice off, probe heating. We'll go ahead and turn that off as well. The passengers are probably going to be sat in the back like, yo, come on now. Um, <laughs> 80 PCS test we're not going to do. It's not the last flight of the day. Um, ah, okay, so you're supposed to put it to feather before fuel shuts off. For shutting down of the engines, that's fine. Um, right, so we're not going to do that full procedure. So parking checklist, taxi and takeoff light are off, hydraulic pressure. Uh, we can check down here and on the on here. That's all good, 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 good. Well, actually, it's not good because uh, we should have three times three thousand psi. I think actually. No, I think we're good there. Honestly. It's just for the braking, isn't it? Okay, so back brake engaged. Transponder standby. We'll go ahead and do that. Condition lever 2. Feather. MP stabilized. Prop brake is ready. Prop brake blue light. Checked on. Propeller 2. Check stop. Seatbelt sign off. Beacon light off. Tax door opening. Okay, good. Let's get those passengers off then, shall we? Seatbelt signs off. Beacon light off. Good. We're not going to use external power here, chat, because we're just going to do the ATR thing where we're going to keep the engine running in hotel mode. That's going to supply our power, which is going to be nice. Right, cool. So let's do aircraft. Get the main door open. Put the tail prop in. Now, wheel chocks as well. And that's it. That's all we're going to need. Yeah, the marshaller is, is kind of like... He's just... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he's just very keen. It's his first day on the job, you know? Right then, chat. Let's just do a very quick thing here. Let's just do a very quick thing. Need to stop the... Oh, come on. Okay, fine. Looks like we're going to have to stop the second engine. And we're going to have to get external power connected. I didn't really want to do that, but nevertheless, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and do it. Okay. Let's just do a thing real quick. Let's just see if we can get GSX to work semi well with uh, with this thing. So, I'll just open up this guy here, and we don't want to do too much stuff because I think all I'm going to do really, God, that window keeps going underneath. Um, all I want to do is just go for the PAX door. Passengers wouldn't board at the front, surely. Or is there actually a door that... There is. Okay, so passengers potentially could board here, right? So... Let's just do a quick thing here. Let's customize. Ah, okay, so it thinks that's a passenger door, door one. That's interesting. Okay, fine. Right, hang on. So, PAX 1 will go embedded stair. And then we'll customize it. Okay. I 
don't think you can stay. Oh, there we go. That's cool. Right. So we'll go here. Let's just control the speed of this camera real quick. It's going insanely quick. Right. There we go. That's better. Right. Let's just quickly just see if we can get this to do a thing. Um... I always forget the controls with this. Rotate, one and three. I wanted to raise it, didn't I? One and F1 and F4. Oops. Alright, we'll do that there. And we'll just go like that. Stairs starts. It's quite far off the ground, isn't it? The stairs. Oh, it's because of the GSX thing, isn't it? So we'll just do... It's probably about as close as we're going to get, isn't it? Stairs end. I'm not sure if I've got this the right way around here. I might have got it the wrong way around. Let's try it like that, shall we? And then... <laughs> and then I'm just going to close off the cargo doors so that the baggage handlers don't come because we don't want those guys. So I'm just going to clear those off there. Cargo main, that can go. No. Right. Shall we give it a try? It's going to send a passenger bush, which is probably totally unrealistic for an airport this size, but... Let's see if it works. Right, okay. So we are all shut down and on the turnaround. Good stuff. Passengers bus is coming. Oh, it's coming. Right. Oh, my days. <laughs> Alexandra, thank you very much for the sub. Right, good. We'll do one more then, chat. So let's get set up. We'll basically just do the return leg for that flight uh, under the same flight number. And um, it should be good. Yeah, I think what we'll try and do as well, chat, is I'll see if I can get it to... In import from Simbrief as well and we'll see if we can get that rocking um, and I'll show you how I managed to do it if, if at all that works oh, she's not positioned too well is she but it does look like it's going to work it's just not going to do most fantastic there's a head poking through the top of the uh, plane there so, yeah, definitely needs some work. I think uh, Umberto is probably going to have to do a custom profile. Oh, and I've definitely got the stairs the wrong way around as well. Oopsie daisies. Never mind. Okay, fine. Fun fact, if more than seven passengers try to disembark the plane at the same time, the tail will tilt back so far it will hit the ground, which is why the tail prop is... No way! <laughs> oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. Um, howling crazy did I manage to calibrate my throttles, throttles okay yeah it worked absolutely fine for me yeah would I recommend to buy the ATR well if you've got 10 or 15 pounds to spend on an aircraft I do think it is worth it for that price in fact I think it's more than worth it for that price thinking about thinking about what you're getting here is it's quite a high fidelity aircraft with a lot of features and it's the cheapest we've ever seen I think for a high, an aircraft of this fidelity, it's cheaper than most low fidelity aircraft, which is just absolutely insane. So, yeah, I would say it is worth it if you like this kind of aircraft. Yeah. Right, cool. And someone was asking regarding the throttle setup. So let me just say this again for probably the third or fourth time today. Um, if you're struggling to have the EFB recognize your throttle here, so if you go into your throttle setup and it's not, these values are not moving, 
Um, go into your controls options. Go to ignore what I've got bound because I use spad.next. But go to throttle one axis and then try, rather than using this one, use this one. That is probably what I would recommend. Um, or the other way around. You'll have to experiment because, like I said, I use spad.next, which is an external program, to um, to map my keybinds. So it's a bit different for me, but I'm fairly certain that was the same. It was the same fix for the CRJ. Okay, so um, let's just clean up here. Um, I think we don't really need to do too much except for get the fuel pumps off. Um, right, cool. So um, I'm just redoing the flight plan for return. Uh, bear with me. Hi, hello, uh, thank you. <laughs> it's all going wrong out here, isn't it? Shall we have a shall we have a quick look at the airport though? Because this is one of the uh hand the Sobo not a Sobo, I think Orbex have done this one. It's got an interior, look at that. And it keeps shooting me outside, but they've probably put a collision box or something around it. But there we go. It's got a nice interior, look at that, it's beautiful. Look at this place though, chat, absolutely stunning. I had a look at this actual island before uh, the update earlier on today as well, and it looks much improved, it looks so much better, chat. Like the trees were so patchy previously and it just looked weird, but now it looks absolutely fantastic, I have to say. Why well, was he walking back on the plane? I think it's because I've set the GSX profile up a little bit incorrectly. Right, chat. Okay, so let's get set up then. I've got the Simbrief done. Uh, I'm going to export it as the same format that the um, CRJ accepted. And we'll put that in the folder that I think it might be. And we'll see if that works. Let's just paste it in here. Oops, that's the CRJ. I'm thinking of the wrong thing here, aren't I? Um, ATR. We'll stick it in there, see if it works. I don't, I don't know if it will, but we'll, we'll come back to it in a moment anyway. Right, so let's go back to the menu page. FMS1, init. Pause in it, we don't need to do again. Um, performance in it, we will do. Sorry, I'm doing this in the wrong order, order aren't I? Um... It should be pausing it. Nav data units, which we don't need to check again. We've done that. So it should be straight to wait now. And just for your reference, guys, we'll have a quick look at the landing report. But again, it wasn't the greatest landing in the world. But we were a little bit behind the uh, aiming points. But, I mean, it's a short runway, isn't it? 189 feet per minute, though, so not too shabby, but also not not the most brilliant in the world. Uh, in terms of the where we landed down the runway, I think we should have definitely hit the aiming point there. It is a very short runway, and we would have been able to make our turn off then, but nevertheless, not the worst landing in the world. Um, so, who actually got closest there? There's been so many chat messages. I... I don't know if I'm going to be... Oh, look at that. Dio got 181, so he must be closest there. 189. Nice done, Dio. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, Ramsey, welcome to the chat. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, welcome. Mohammed, thank you very much for subbing, and thank you so much for all of your kind comments today. 
um, and being my uh, my ca my co-pilot for the day. I really appreciate that. <laughs> You need to have the button pressed on the auto pressure panel. If you're correct, it will show elevation on the panel on it. Example, 200 feet. Yeah, Mohammed. so I did try that one. So I assume you mean the source selection uh, push button. So you can see here it does say FMS, which I assume when the button is not pressed, it's taking the information from the FMS. Whereas when it's pressed, it highlights manual and then you can change the landing elevation. Um, do correct me if I'm missing something there, though. Right then, chats. So, is there anyone else that wants to join, by the way? I don't know if I... I haven't checked that in a little while. Nobody else. Okay, fine. If you do want to join, feel free to add me. And I'll add you to the group here. You can fly along. Um, we're, we're going from NTTM to NTTB. So let's do our weights. Uh, 22,932 is the zero fuel weight. Not allowed. Do I need to clear it? Interesting. Maybe I set the fuel first. Block fuel is quite a lot more this time. 2,905. And the zero fuel weight. 22932. Is that too much? I think that's too much, chat. I think the sim brief profile is slightly incorrect. So let's go 22800. Interesting. Max zero fuel weights. Let's look it up. I mean, it says on Simbri for Max Zero Fuel Weight is 22,999. Zero Fuel Weight cannot be more than 22 tons. Right, okay. So Simbrief has it wrong then. So we'll just go for 21932 then. Ah. Oh. That still doesn't work. Is it pushing me over my max takeoff weight maybe? With that amount of fuel? Let's just try something a lot lower. Okay, that works. Yeah, it must be taking me over my max takeoff weight then. Interesting. So the sim brief profile definitely needs some work. Um, right. Okie dokes. Let's see how high we can make it then. <laughs> let's, go, let's just go for that. That's fine. Takeoff trim is going to be one down. Let's see. Does it set that on its own? It does not. So we'll probably have to set that. I think probably what I did previous is... Um, Is set it through the EFB, so that's fine. Right, okay, so that's the weights done. We'll return. Um, performance in it. Uh, we'll cruise at uh, slightly higher this time. Flight of 140. And we'll do a long range cruise because I just want to see how it does with long range cruise. I assume it just selects a slightly slower speed. Um, so yeah, that's fine. We'll leave alternate cruise altitude out this time because I think it actually just cleared that on its own last time. I'm fairly certain. In fact, let's just do it for science. Two two zero. Sorry. NCRG. NCRG and two two zero. Good. Okay. Um, is there an easier way to get back to the 
main menu there. Interesting. Right. Okay, anyways. Perfect. It is done. Flight plan in it. We'll go route. Now, let's see if this works. So, we're going from NTTM to NTTB. NTTM, NTTB. This is just for you guys who want to know if you can do a sim brief import. That doesn't appear to work. I'm just going to check the file name here. going to rename it just so it's just that nttm nttb no okay fine maybe that doesn't work then we'll leave the flight id the same which it is um and then we'll go nttm nttb good Fine. So we're expecting runway three zero here for departures. And we're gonna use the Vite three November departure. Which we'll also execute. Good. Let's just check that on the charts real quick. Vite three November. Runway three zero. Straight ahead and then a right turn and a left turn. Max 145 knots at or above 500. At or above 500 is in. Speed. It's showing us nine. <laughs> um, interesting. Wonder if I can just put it in like this. Uh, oh no, sorry. What am I on about? Airbus. I'm thinking Boeing. Right, there we go, 145, that's in there, good, okay, fine. So that's in there, and then out to Vite after the intercept, that's fine. Good, good, good. Right, so arrivals into... Bora Bora. Fact to know, we'll put in the flight plan route first. So from Vite, we're going to go... Airway, which I believe you can just press on this actually, and it should show you the relevant airways. And then you can go Juliet 21 from Vite to Hotel Hotel November. I think you can just press on this as well, and it should give you a list. There we go, beautiful. And then we can go to oh, look at that, there's a waypoint called Fuzz. Hotel, Hotel November. Good. Great. Okie dokes. And then we're going to do the Romeo in uh, Romeo Uniform 1 Bravo arrival onto runway 11. So we'll use the Arnav 11 Zulu and the Rub. We'll just call it the Rub arrival. <laughs> Um, via I think we want to do vectors really so we'll just go no via execute good right so let's check that over here let's zoom out a bit so I can actually see what's going on Vite. Oh, we need to clear the disco as well. Let's get rid of that. Good. And then we'll go into vectors somewhere around Ospod, I think. Good. Right. Fantastic. So that's that done. Lovely stuff. Fantastic. Good, good, good. Oh, 
Oh, there we go. There's the airport view. Love to see it. Very nice. That is super cool. That'd be really, really useful for big airports. <laughs> that is really cool. Anyone else getting a constant crash of desktop with the ATR? I'm not, I'm afraid. We've been sat here for four hours and 11 minutes and we haven't crashed a single time. Max zero fuel weight 2100, max takeoff weight 2300, max ramp 23170, max landing 22350. Thank you, Mohammed. Thank you. I will keep those to hand. How easy automatic is it to learn compared to the A320, for example? Well, it's not as automatic as the A320, but it's quite well automated compared to uh, some other aircraft. Really need some tutorials on how to especially calibrate the throttles. Okay, well... Uh, unfortunately, I'm actually working tomorrow. Otherwise, I would do a video, but... Um, maybe we can just... Maybe we can just do a little mini... Maybe we can just do a mi little mini... Throttle calibration tutorial... Right here, right now, maybe. Right. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it real quick, then. So... Obviously, a lot of people are having issues with the throttle calibration. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually close spad.next so it doesn't interfere. And so it can be sort of, we can all be on common ground. Right. So first of all, when you're testing the throttles, obviously, make sure you've got the gust lock off because that's going to impede your testing um, when you're doing this. So um, take the gust lock, off, gust lock off, come into your controls options, make sure you go to your throttle quadrant, then come to... Throttle one, and then I'm pretty sure it's going to be throttle one axis without the zero to 100%. Um, so we'll go ahead and just check L axis X, which is my left throttle. It's not moving for some reason, but um, I think that's just a UI glitch and then we'll do the same over here L axis Y and we'll apply and save and let's just come back here and come to the tablet we'll go throttle setup and you can see the values are moving there which is good right and I also think you need to go and have power your throttles I don't believe they want to be reversed but Let's just test that real quick. I... Right. And then we'll just have a quick look down here. And we do want them reversed, actually. I tell a lie. Cut that bit out. <laughs> uh, so we'll have them reversed. Cool. And then come into the EFB here. Go to Options. Throttle Setup. Click on that. Now, if you've got the TCA, you want dual axis because dual axis is essentially two two throttle levers, two axes. And for the TCA, it does actually have a dedicated section on the axis for a reverse, um, for the reverses. So you do want to have that ticked as well. And then you want to go ahead and set each of the notches um, as per this. So your idle notch is going to be your idle notch. Notch is going to be, or should I say idle detent, and then your notch detent is basically going to be round about this white marker here, which is going to help the aircraft do its auto um, torque setting for the engines. So I set that for my TCI. I set that to the first detent. And then for ramp... I set that to the second detent on the TCA, which is going to be about, about there, just below max power. And then max power is just pushing it all the way forwards. And then you should be able to bring it back to idle then, and then bring it into reverse by bringing it lower. So hopefully that helps. Um, you can also play with the tolerance here. So for example, I've upped the idle tolerance a bit. So that when my throttle moves slightly when it's in idle, 
it doesn't accidentally drop into reverse so that's essentially like a dead zone and i did the same at the notch tolerance as well so it doesn't easily move out of the notch which there we go yeah so maybe a little bit but i'm not going to be pressing on my levers when i'm flying so there we go i hope that helps Right, good. <laughs> I'll cut that out of the stream and put it on YouTube for people to uh, for people to uh, to look at, and hopefully it helps uh, get things sorted. And I'm going to go back in here and just unbind my things because I'm using Spad on next. Good. Oh. Oh, and one one final thing that you do need to make sure of is. Coming back into your controls options here, go to your sensitivity and make sure that both of these two axes, which are your throttle levers, throttle axes, make sure they're on a fully linear, so like this. So sensitivity 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 100% on both of these two. And that uh, should get you sorted. Right, good, good, good. Okay, so where were we? Thomas Rats loving it? Yeah, me too. Although I think, just reminded myself that we do, we, we do want to, I think we want to reduce the sensitivity a little bit because it does feel quite, quite twitchy, especially on the y-axis. I think we'll come down to 50% on that. And yeah, let's probably go 50% on both, I think. And I think I need a dead zone as well. I don't think I've got a dead zone set there. I usually zero out the dead zone when I'm flying the Phoenix because... That has a dead zone built into it. Does anyone know where the manuals are for this aircraft? So Microsoft Flight Simulator have a part of their website which usually has manuals on it. But I'm not sure if they've updated it yet for the ATR. So usually they put their manuals on this website right here. Um, but the doesn't seem like they've, they've put the ATR on there yet so I would probably check the forums potentially there is also a calibration guide on the forums as well which is right there Oh, guys, regarding the the discount as well, everybody should have got the discount. Everybody should have got the discount. And I can't see any manuals on the forums currently, but yeah, hopefully that gets you at least in the right direction. Um, you could also go ahead and search online, search for the FCOM for the ATR or for the flight crew training manual. Um, they're fairly easy to find online. I've managed to find them all, so I'm sure you guys will be able to do that as well. Okay, cool. So, where were we? VNAV. Oh, we didn't set that up for the destination, did we? Never mind. Um, right, take off Perth. That's all fine. Transition altitude here is going to be... 9,000 again, of course. Oh. Oh. It won't let me uh, put it in there. That's interesting. Ha. Huh. Strange. Does it let me change it here? Is it because I've manually edited it here? No? Okay. Interesting. 
Right, okay then. Well, that's that. So then. I think we're ready to go ahead and start. I'm not going to run all the checklists again this time. I just want to get rolling, really, and have another go at that. So, let's go ahead and start engine number two in hotel mode. So, we'll get the pump on for the right side. We'll use a starter A this time. Engine start number two. NH 10%. Condition lever to feather. Oh, we need the wing lights on as well, don't we? Oh, it's still on. <laughs> I didn't even realise it's so hidden, that one. Right, seatbelt signs can be on as well because we've got fuel loaded now. Good. Okay. Fantastic. So that's all good. Now we should be able to disconnect the external power. And nothing will go off. Love to see it. Very good. Very nice. We we'll, might as well get the ground crew to remove it. We'll assume we're boarded now. We'll get rid of the tail prop and the wheel chocks. And to be honest with you, let's just go for a engine start now. Um, a few other things to clean up though, of course. Want to get rid of the MDA. Not sure if there's a way of actually removing that without. There we go. Fine. Good. Okay. Lovely stuff. Right. Coming up above then, we'll get the probe heat on and the windshield heat on as well. I may get some of this out of order this time, chat, but just looking to uh, 73 degrees. What? Right. Okay. Let's get the prop brake off. MP is stable at We need to set some better wing views for the departure here, chat. This time. Let's see how close we can get to that window there. There we go. Oh. We'll just set a couple for now, just just because I don't want to waste your guys' time again. But oh, I really need to do some config tweaking to get a bit closer to these windows. <laughs> I just can't get close to them at all. They just seem to be have an invisible wall. Oh, come on. Anyways, let's just do it like... Let's do it like that, I think. Right, cool. Okay. So, I obviously forgot the beacon light again, didn't I? 
Um, right. Strobe lights I forgot as well, of course. Right. Okay. So, left engine starts. NH 10%. Cabin temperature indicator is it's it's absolutely lost its mind, hasn't it? <laughs> Seventy degrees. I mean it's coming down now, fortunately, but let's just do this, shall we? <laughs> right, MP stabilized. Oops. Get the seatbelt on. Don't want to fall off. Right. I'm not running checklists this time round, chat, just because I, I want to get another flight done, really. Um, and I don't have that much time left. Um, I'm just doing everything from memory here. That's why some things are a little bit out of order. Um, but nevertheless, we should still uh, we should still get there, hopefully. <laughs> right, engine start to uh, off and start abort. Um, all the bleed li uh, fault lights have gone out now. Everything looks good. Good, 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 good. Right. Okie dokies. So, we shall at least run some checklists. So... Um, how do we get back to the... Uh, Oh, it's deleted it for me. I didn't want that. These click spots are a little... <laughs> they do take some getting used to. Right, let's go down to normal procedures. There we go. Before taxi. Right, so... Let's get our altitude set. We'll set this up to... Uh, 1 4,000. Good. Um, flight directors could come on. We'll go indicated airspeed V nav, L nav, L nav is armed. Okay. There we go. Good, good, good. Take a selector down here. Pressurization automatic. Okay. Fine. Recall, we'll assume it's checked. Cockpit com hatch is closed. Condition lever 1 and 2 are in auto. Anti ice not required. TIU is on and checked. And skid test will not do that this time. Flaps will set to 15. Nose wheel steering is on. I keep clearing out these checklists by accident here. Text checklist. We'll complete that as we move off. Good. No, please. Right, so... Let's do it, chat. I feel like I've missed something, but we'll work it out. That doesn't seem to want to reset, but hey-ho. Good. 
Just heading on autopilot until heading is green. Seem to want to do anything. Let's click spot some mad. How is anyone supposed to know? Yeah, well, it's, it's a bit of a simism, really, because of the... Um... Oh, man, these views. Yeah, because of the... Um... The position of the actual controls where you would control those from, George. So usually you'd either use this panel or this panel down here. And it's just a bit awkward in the sim. So that's why they've decided to put those click spots there. But they are very difficult to uh, press, I will admit. Any nav button? Interesting. Maybe let's just turn the flight directors off for a moment. That doesn't recycle the FMA. Interesting. When you line up for takeoff, you need to turn bleeds one and two off and turn back on on the climb procedure ah i did not know that i didn't i didn't see that in the uh, procedures i read before now it's correct okay fantastic was it just basically the roll hold that we didn't want on there for the, the takeoff is that what what you were concerned about mohammed is there a full flight tutorial or something on it how are people figuring out how to fly it uh, well, you can use the in-sim checklist, Roger Dodger. Uh, welcome to his chat, nevertheless. Liana, welcome to his chat. Um, but uh, I personally looked up the uh, the FCOM online and used that. I think we may be in Thomas Rass's way here. <laughs> no roll holds. Okay, good, 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 good. Oh, Thomas Rask is cruising. Absolutely loving life. I do have to say the ground handling does feel quite nice, though. Right, so takeoff briefing. Not too much to say, really. It's straight ahead to 500 feet. Max 145 knots. Right turn. Uh, to intercept the outbound outbound 309 from the Tahiti VOR and then outbound to uh, Vite and then en route. Not the greatest lineup I've ever done. Let's just set the parking brake there. Gustlock can come off. Takeoff briefing is performed. Gustlock is off. Flight controls are checked. Transponder and TCAS. Uh, I will actually just do that real quick. Uh, we'll turn that on. We'll get the weather radar back on as well. It does seem like the weather radar is actually working in this aircraft chat, interestingly enough. Uh, airflow normal. Now, I'm suggesting we go for packs off, basically, for the departure. Is that what you're saying? As in packs off or engine bleeds off? Like so. Yep. Um, sorry, I've lost where I'm reading. Ryan, yeah, definitely just trying to, you know, give it a good go. I mean, there's a lot of people here who want to see it. Let's let's give it a let's give it a showcase. Why not? Good, good, good. Right. Okay, doke. So bleeds are off. Cabin crew advised. Engine bleeds are off. External lights. We'll turn the landing lights on in a moment. Lateral flight director bar centered and rudder. Cam is centered. Oh, it's not actually. There he goes. Good. Before takeoff check is complete, landing lights can come on. Let's do it, chat.
forgot to pay attention to this while we taxied out as well. I think I accidentally turned it off, didn't I? But never mind. We'll give that a go on another stream. Is there a way to stop these DH and MDA fl flashing as well, Mohammed? Is that is that normal? There we go. Okay, it's, it's gone off again. Oh, no, it's come back. <laughs> All right, let's do it, chat. I can't reset the ET either. That's not normal. Okay. Right. Well, let's do it anyway, chat. Release the parking brake. Holding it on. Well, trying to hold it on the tow brakes. Let's go. I feel like I've forgotten something, but... We're going, chat. Airspeed is alive. Got wind. We've actually got a bit of a tailwind here, chat. I think our calculations on Simbrief have not been too great. Oh my days. We're actually going to reach V1 here. <laughs> Chat! That's no good. <laughs> okay, let's try that again. Not sure what happened there, Chat. I think... Because there's no meta for this airport, because of the fact we had a tailwind there, um, we couldn't get up. We couldn't get up. Let's just stop right here. We'll edit that out. Uh, yeah, yeah. Nobody saw anything. Nobody saw anything. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll go back to performance here. Uh, the takeoff data does seem to be... Um, 113, 113, 117, which I did check. 113, 113, 117, that's correct. Interesting. I forgot boost. There's no boost in this um, in this version of the ATR. QOT, uh, welcome to the chat, nevertheless. Acceleration altitude, you don't need to. There's no way to set acceleration altitude in this aircraft, uh, Miguel, as far as I'm aware. Right, <laughs> let's just try that again, chat. Um, let's try... Can we do a flap 30 takeoff in this thing? Try static takeoff. Brakes on power to the notch. Yeah, I was going to try that. Yeah. Is that is it possible to do a flap 30 takeoff in this Mohammed? Is it a done thing or is it not not really a thing there? The boost function is there. Oh, okay. I thought we checked that earlier on and we didn't we didn't see it, but Oh, boost is there. Okay. No flap 30. Okay. I didn't think I'd read that. Got it. Let's try boost then. I'm not actually sure what boost does. Well, let's do it. So we'll do a static takeoff. And essentially what we're going to do though is um, we'll actually go to heading rather than LNAV. We'll push the heading. And we shall essentially just... Just turn us, give ourselves a left turn after departure because we've got a little bit more headwind this time, so it should be a bit better. <laughs> right, so parking brake is released, tow brakes are in. Take two.
NH is stable. Let's go. Speed is alive at 60 knots. Still not looking good, chat. Aborted. I can't make it, chat. I don't think it I don't think this aircraft can make it on this runway with the weights that we've got which is interesting <laughs> too limiting runway for the right weight Yeah, it's interesting. Interesting. Right. We're just going to have to chuck a few passengers out here, chat. I'm going to go to the other end of the runway because we do want to have that headwind component. Um, but what we're going to do, chat, is we're actually going to come in here. We're going to chuck some of you guys out. I'm sorry. You'll have to, you'll have to get on the next flight, I'm afraid. So. <laughs> oh. That was, that was just so that... <laughs> This was, this was just so you could uh, get off so you're not directly on the runway when you get out, obviously. My takeoff talk should be in blue after you confirm takeoff data in the performance page. Flat 15 for takeoffs. Miguel, thank you so much. Let's have a look then. I'm not sure we... I'm pretty sure we skipped that for this flight because we were trying to get going relatively uh, quickly. As in this blue little circle here? Wait. My trim is slightly off, but only by 0 0.1. Yeah, well, I think I think the loading on Simbrief is a little bit balked, chat, because obviously it tried to load us with way too much um, initially. Thomas Rass absolutely flying around there. Love to see it. Oh, I see, Mohammed. Right, that's what you meant. Um, Miguel, got you. Yeah, so we've got that. Yeah, exactly. Right, we're going to chuck some people out here, chat. 
Um, just because I don't want to have to end up aborting the takeoff again. We do have quite a lot more fuel on board than what we did last time as well. Um, let's just chuck a few people out. See ya. <laughs> now, we'll probably have to just recheck the speeds here. 108, 108, 111. 108, 118, 111. That's all set. Can we change the transition altitude yet? Oh, we can now. Okay, interesting. <laughs> so strange. DJ Show, welcome to the chat. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay. Let's try again. I'm feeling confident. Right, we've got boost on. Bleeds are off. Take three shots. Stable. Let's go. Airspeed alive. Sixty knots. Come on. Come on. We might need to use a bit of the grass here, chat. I do apologize. Oh no, the trees. <laughs> I was... <laughs> why, why is it... <laughs> Do I need to empty the aircraft fully? It just won't seem to... Um... It just won't take off with this weight or power setting. Well, I'm glad you guys are finding it amusing anyway. We'll try use flaps 30, even though we're not supposed to, yeah. We'll try it. Power to ramp as well, yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. There's a takeoff config warning. Take four. Thank you for your feedback, Captain Nathan. It just feels like the acceleration is so slow. Right, 60 knots there. Still more or less the same acceleration as before. <laughs> it won't have it, chat. It won't have it. It won't have it. I wonder if something's mucked up with the loading on it or something. This we're now probably lighter than what we were on the last flight. And the runway length was fairly similar. Let's check. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's 300 meters less here, but... Hmm... Oh, 
Have I messed my throttle calibration up? No, I shouldn't have done. Runway length is 1,300 and... It's 1,230 metres. I believe they do operate the ATR out of this airport in the real world. 72, 600. Uh, your damper does not need to be on for takeoff now. Throttle calibration is fine. There's no brakes on, to my knowledge. No. Q400 is much faster. It is definitely a faster aircraft, the Q400. Q400 is a beautiful aircraft. Right, we're going to try again, chat. I think I'm just going to maybe halve the amount of fuel we've got. Because we do have quite a lot more fuel than we did last time. And I don't think we're going to need all of it. Need to get the gross weight down to 21 tons. Did I let the handbrake off? I definitely did. <laughs> definitely got the handbrake off. Second in from the left, the condition levers. Go Togo with parking brake on. We did that. We did that. Uh, behind this guys, welcome to the channel. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you. Chat, we're just going to dump some weight out here. Gross weight is 20 tons. So it's actually under... What, uh, what you mentioned there, Mohammed. We'll go for 2,000 on the fuel and we'll try drop the zero fuel weight even more now. Takeoff trim is still the same. Sixteen tons gross weight now. Condition levers need to be on full. I'm not 100% sure they do. 20 tons is not limiting. I guess the numbers are not so accurate. Condition levers shouldn't need to be all the way forward, all the way forward chat for a normal takeoff. Right, we will try it again with this reduced weight. Um, <laughs> and then I'm, 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 I'm fast out of ideas. We've got more or less a direct crosswind now as well. <laughs> I tell you what, shall we just alter the weather a little bit here, chat? To make it a little bit more... Let's see how it does, actually, this time around. Let's just see how it does this time. Fifth time lucky? See belt on chat. Now we're flaps fifteen take off ace fly wins.
still feels very slow. Good. No good. <laughs> I don't get it, chat. We're not even that heavy anymore. My trim is set correctly. Flaps are set correctly. I'm using more power than I should do. tell you what I'm going to do, chat, is let's just give ourselves a nice strong headwind and just see if that helps. Did I just land? No, we're just attempting to take off. <laughs> Poser. Welcome, though. I hope you're doing well. Right, chat, we're going to have to do something here because something clearly isn't... <laughs> isn't right here so let's just go ahead and set up ourselves some better more favorable weather although the weather is not particularly bad here anyway so we'll go to the oh hello hello i can't change the wind here huh Um, I can't change the wind apparently chats And stick on quadrant looks like it's set to parking. But it is now, yeah. What's different? Um, we're lighter this time. I didn't try anything else different. We did, we went to full, we went to ramp power. Um, Allowed the engine power to get to full power before letting go of the brakes. Uh, bleeds are off. Boost is on. Trim sets correctly. I'm uh, a, bit, a bit confused. <laughs> Make sure the parking brake is all the, for all the way forward. Yeah, it, it is. Look, when I release my parking brake on my controller, it goes all the way forwards. ATR doesn't have speed brakes now. It has spoilers. This, yeah, it sets takeoff power, yeah, which is already set. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll just try another flap 30. What's the windsock doing? So we have got a bit of a headwind now. Does that change? Okay, so the winds do change actually with the presets, so we can potentially manipulate the weather with the with the presets. Um, okay, so let's just try do that as well. So we'll go live weather off. So that gives us a bit of a headwind now, mostly clear. That's even better, but it's still quite uh, weak headwind. Let's see if we can get a better, stronger wind. So that's good, but it's the other right, other direction. That's not too bad. That could possibly work for us.
Let's go for this guy, chat. That's a decently direct headwind. That should hopefully help. We'll go flaps 30. We'll go to ramp power. And other than that, I'm a bit stuck on what to try. <laughs> um, I'll pull back on the stick as well to try and ease it off the ground. Let's try it. Do I have a dead zone on my brake pedal? I do not now. You can see if I let go of my brake pedals here, it starts rolling straight away, so. And the last takeoff went okay, didn't it? One more try, chat. We can arm Elna for this uh, departure as well. Come on, chat. Cross all your fingers and your toes. It's not. I didn't even didn't even go I feel like we accelerated slower then than every other time we got a brakes hot though message so well at least the brake temperatures mo modeled properly <laughs> makes no sense yours worked early yeah I mean ours worked earlier as well Let's just check, see if I can check a couple more things here in my controls. Just make sure there's nothing else that could be causing an issue. Wheels from outside. You know what, chat? I actually have tow brakes bound in spad.next as well. Um, so I wonder if that's causing an issue, although it it shouldn't. But I believe I have them bound in the sim as well. So maybe... I don't know, man. Yeah, you can see the brakes are sitting fully back when they're released, which is good. Okay. That's the wheels from the outside. I don't think they've modelled the brakes being red hot, <laughs> if that's what you're looking for. Haven't got chocks on, no. Haven't got chocks on. Right. We'll try again, chat. We'll try again. I'm determined. sure if the acceleration looks any better at all there. No, 
it's not. It just seems to get to about 80 knots and it just sort of quits. Oh. Oh. Oh, wow. They've actually modeled in a sound for... They've actually modeled in a sound for the, uh, for a tail strike. <laughs> All right. Well, we're up now. The ore damper on. not sure what's going on there but look at this it just seems to be wanting to roll to the left on its own which is also a bit strange i don't have any aileron trim in so i'm, I'm really not sure on that one either right okay let's get us trimmed down acceleration altitude Go to climb power. Now, I'm not exactly sure what it's trying to achieve with the LNAV here, but let's just give ourselves a heading to the left here. Let's not set the wheel well on fire. We made it out, chat. Let's go. Right. I, I, I need to get that AP in. Let's just check this out, though, real quick. Oof. Right. Okay. Oops. We'll get the bleeds back on now. Why does it sound like we're getting more power out of the climb thrust setting than we are than we were on the takeoff? I think the power management switch was bugged on the same. Yeah, I think it was too, yeah. Right, anyway, we're above the flap retraction speed. Let's go flaps up. Speed is checked. And we'll go to LNAV. Uh, we can go back to live weather now, I think. Oh, what what is it doing here with this turn? We'll just give ourselves a direct to Vite. Lovely. Right, we got there. <laughs> Scenery looks amazing, doesn't it, chat? I mean, we're a bit far away now, but it looks even better in Bora Bora. It looks so, so good now. Look at all those clouds. Crikey, that looks epic. All right, then, chat. Well, we finally made it out of there. In one piece as well. Well, actually, I think, I think our tail is probably paying the price for that takeoff there. But <laughs> right, okay, so brake temperature is hot. Let's clear that. Um still trying to remember these click spots here. Normal procedures. After takeoff. Landing gear is up, flaps zero, power management, climb. That uh, is checked. Engine bleeds are on, taxi and takeoff lights are off, altimeters are set and cross checked. After takeoff check is complete. Good. We'll set standard now as well as we're cleared up to our cruising altitude of flight level 140. Lovely job. Right. Fantastic. 
Yeah. Because I don't know if you guys noticed when I went from uh, takeoff to climb power with this uh, power management selector, you could hear the engine power just absolutely come alive. So. Hmm. 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 Anyway, we're over and out. We're off. We're off, we're off, we're off. So, let's just check our arrival data then whilst we've got a minute here. And then I'll catch up with some of the messages in the chat. So. Let's scroll down a bit. Uh, we're going to do the RMP 11 Zulu. Vocal 2000 or above. FTB 11 2000. That's good. So that's all set. And then our MDA is going to be uh, one, uh, 520. Which we might as well set now just to get ahead of ourselves. Cool. Right. Lovely. So that's all good. Increase the range here. Let's see. Yeah, I wonder if this uh, weather radar is going to show us some, some readings again. Because it did show us some stuff before, didn't it? I'm just intrigued to see. Does it, I wonder if the tilt is going to work as well. Not sure the tilt is working, but... We'll, we'll see when we'll get a bit closer to some weather. Good. Right. Fine. Not too bad there, chat, I don't think. I mean, <laughs> that was a bit of a mission to get off the ground there, which I feel like it shouldn't have been, but hey-ho. We got there in the end. Oh, look at that. I didn't see that before. <laughs> So much easier to use this button right here. These buttons. Crikey. Lovely. Right. Off to the races chat. Flight level 100. Let's get that seatbelt sign. Let's get the seatbelt off. Um... Good. Landing lights off. Seabelt signs can come off as well. And we're on our way. I obviously forgot the strobe light because of everything else that was going on. <laughs> Lovely. Right. Can leave the gear down to cool the brakes. Really? Is What is the max uh, speed for the, the gear here? Lowering is 170 knots. Retracting is 160 knots. So we're currently at 170 knots, so we could drop it, but we wouldn't be able to bring it back in again. One thousand to go. We're going at 1,200 feet per minute. Let's just let it capture like that. That's fine. Where is there a brake brake temperature indicator somewhere? Because I can't see it there on the status pages, on the, the, the system pages. It is possible I'm also just completely missing it. No indicator. Got you. How can you zoom on the ND? So there's click spots. Uh, VSIM pilot. Go to your options. Click on display click spot help. That'll show you the click spots. So you can see on the ND here, you've got range up and down at the top and the bottom. So you can either just click there like that. Or you can use the actual control, which is this. Range buttons here. Is 
Did you just take the condition lever to full in takeoff mode? No, I didn't. No, we used it in uh, conditions lever was, was uh, in auto. How much does it cost? I believe it's around £11. I think it's currently on sale with the uh, World Update sale. Right, lovely jubbly. Is there a way to view my actual cruise speed without going and changing this to cruise? Hmm. Not sure. Let's go to cruise anyway. These guys should really move. There should be a way to move those together. I'm sure that's what I did on the first flight, but anyway, I don't know. What is going on there? Why is that twitching around on its own? Oh, you can move them together if you put the uh, finger over it like that rather than using the arrow. Got you. Interesting. Okay, that's fine. No worries. We are going a bit fast at the moment, but... I did select an economy cruise this time, didn't I? So let's see what it does now that we've leveled off. Even though we've leveled off a little bit early, actually. It doesn't seem to have got all the way up to flight level 140. We're still in VNAV Alt Star. I feel like climb power is actually less than cruise power. Yeah. It is. <laughs> yeah, it's just stopped dead there, hasn't it, Mohammed? It's very strange. I wonder if we can just cheese it up there by giving it a little VS100. What's the power management used for? It's to select your target power setting for a, set, a, a certain stage of flight. Um, because the torque management in the aircraft is when you have it in this notch... It's, it's automatic. So by using the power management knob, you could change, you know, the various different power settings for the earlier stages of the flight. Okay, now we've got alt, but we're still not at flight level 140. Interesting. I feel like there's something wrong with this aircraft. I think there's something has gone wrong with the loading or something. I don't know, man. <laughs> Something's a bit not right. Tell you what we are going to do though chat is we're going to just uh, um, go to max cruise here Not sure if it realizes it's in cruise or not because it's still bugged 170 knots there which is a bit odd to me
Hmm. Nevertheless, we're going to press on. It does barrel rolls easily. <laughs> Love to see it. Well, it's flying the right speed. It's just not bugged the right speed. <laughs> Mohammed, it's very strange. Aviation Kid, welcome to the chat. I'm doing very well. Thank you. How are you doing? Uh, Marcus, thank you very much for the subscription. Full Moon Party, Pilot 2.0. Thank you very much for the subscriptions as well. Welcome to the channel, guys. I'm sorry I'm not able to um, read all messages today. Usually I, I do, but uh, we've just got too many chat messages coming in today. And obviously very much uh, hands-on with the new aircraft here, trying to uh, figure out some rather uh, head-scratching issues. It doesn't seem like we've got a flight plan on this side at all. <laughs> Does this FMS work yet? No, it doesn't. Interesting. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, some of the some of the issues we're having could be because I, um, you know, decked it into the water on the first takeoff attempt. <laughs> that could be related, but I don't know, man. Stay and take it easy, dude. Sorry I missed your message earlier on. Thank you very much for uh, dropping by, and I'll catch you in the next stream for sure. Where do you get liveries? So it comes included with some liveries, but I, I, regarding more liveries, I'm not sure what the, the situation is regarding that at the moment. I think um, it's probably best to just see if the community makes some, potentially. I'm, I'm not sure if, if Microsoft's going to provide any more or not. I assure you ATR is better in real life. Yeah, I don't doubt that. I don't doubt that. I feel like we've probably got an unlucky here with some, some things. But yeah, I mean, I'm sure there will be some updates. I mean, I highly doubt there won't be, to be honest. Is there a Discord for the ATR? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, Shuts, there might be one, but it's obviously a Microsoft plane. Um, so I suppose the Discord would be the Microsoft Flight Sim one or the Microsoft Flight Sim forum, something like that. Does need a paint kit as well, Johnny. Welcome to the chat, though. I hope you're doing well. Uh, Jifi, welcome to the chat as well. Isn't there a way to copy the info from FMS, uh, one, one FMS to the other? Um, not that I'm aware of, no. I mean, they should sync up, shouldn't they? But this FMS just doesn't work at all whatsoever, um, which we discovered on the first flight. So um, I'm not sure if that's just a design quirk of the thing, but yeah. Frantifert, welcome to the chat also. Schemes like they skipped out on the testing QA. Uh, maybe a little bit. Yeah, maybe a little bit. I mean, for the most part, it's pretty good. Like, our first flight was pretty flawless, to be quite honest. And, and I was really impressed. But um, this one has just been a little bit, um, yeah, a little bit dodgy. I don't know how other people who have, you know, flown it out, streamed it, etc. How they've got on. But, um, yeah, I think we might have just got a bit unlucky for this second flight today. There's Bora Bora. Right. Uh, Roger Dodger, no, it doesn't have Simbrief up late. We, we, we tried downloading the PLN file and putting it in the, the right folder, but it didn't work. Right then, chat. Let's do a bit of an arrival briefing as we are coming in now to our arrival airport. So we're going to be arriving at uh, Bora Bora. Uh, this is a 10-2 chart. Transition altitude is 9,000 feet. We're going to assume the transition level is uh, flat level 100 for this arrival. Uh, we're going to be flying the uh, Romeo Uniform 1 Bravo arrival for runway uh, 2 9 -er. In fact, let's check the weather as well whilst we're here. No Metar available, so we'll just have to 
hope and pray. Um, <laughs> uh, right, so it's going to bring us in basically via the uh, Huahain VOR here, which is uh, what we're about to pass over. Uh, following that down to Ospod and then to Rioty, right turn to Bora Bora. NDB and uh, that is our initial approach fix so from there we're going to fly the RMP Zulu approach uh, for runway one one hang on a minute why is it giving me two niner here when we've planned for one one <laughs> uh, perhaps you can use this chart for both runways I mean it obviously doesn't take you directly to an approach so I don't see why not but let's just cross check that I feel like yeah, that's the only arrival chart, so that's... We're going to be putting ourselves on vectors anyway, somewhere mid-down there. Um, so it's going to be the RMP Zulu runway 11. This is 12-1 chart. So we're going to be doing an RNAV approach. Final approach course is 112 degrees. Final approach fix 2,000 feet at, at Foxtrot Tango. Bravo 11. Uh, airport elevation 14 feet. MSI highest in the southeast is 5,000 feet. And uh, within 15 miles, all sectors is 4,000 for the MSA. Um, so, like I said, once uh, we come in towards the airfield here, in towards the Bora Bora NDB, we're going to put ourselves on uh, vectors probably sometime, um, I think just for um, just for a bit of eye candy. I think probably what we'll do, chat, is um, we'll come in from uh, somewhere along this track here. We'll, we'll take a left bearing out here and come around around the island like this on vectors and then into a Bocal. Um, Bocal is the initial approach fix. We're going to take a right turn then towards FTB 11. We need to be at 4,000 feet then. Sorry, 2,000 feet at FTB 11, which is uh, our final approach fix. And then we're going to descend on down the glide path at 3 degrees. Uh, to MTB 11, which is our missed approach point, a mile from the runway, uh, from which point we'll proceed uh, visually. Minimum is going to be 520 here, and uh, if we need to go around, it's turn left direct to Tango Bravo 418, then no miss, climbing to 2,000 feet, do not turn before missed approach point. Um, so that is the RMP Zulu, and uh, we've already checked all the data in the FMS is correct. Uh, we're landing in runway 11, and the taxi... Uh, I mean, we might not make this turn off here, but we can try our damnest. And, uh, yeah, the taxi is fairly straightforward. It's just basically leave the runway and taxi towards the stand down here. Um, so that's that for the taxi in. Uh, we've got a pappy to the uh, to runway 11. That is located... Uh, it doesn't actually say which side it's located on there, but we've got it calibrated to 3 degrees, which should work for us. Not sure if it's going to be correct or not, the run happy at the last airport we flew into was actually balked as well so um yeah that is the arrival procedure um just going to double check before we commence our descent here we do have some data in here for the approach now there's no way i can really get this weather information i suppose we could use microsoft flight sim atc to get the information let's see if we can do that No, there's no ATIS. Okay, so we can't do that either. Fine, no worries. But um, the Q&H, um, again, don't really know what it is. But we'll just set it with the keybind as we go down. I'm pretty sure it was 1013 when we departed, so I wouldn't... I would hazard a guess that it's, it's not going to be too far off that. Right, cool. Approach speeds are already activated here, interestingly. And, um... Yeah, here we come. I'm going to actually start down now, chat, because I'm not sure I entirely trust this top of descent marker here. So we're only 40 miles away from the airfield. 4, 8, 12... So, yeah, we're definitely a little bit high if we fly in a straight line, but we're not going to do, but nevertheless, let's continue. Let's go. Let's start down now. So, we'll go vertical speeds. Um, 
We'll select 2,000 and we'll go straight down there. And uh, we'll go for VS 1500, I think. A little bit higher than three degrees, 1600. And uh, we'll come over yonder. Normal procedures, descent checklist. Um, FWS recall, we'll assume that's checked. Landing elevation, oh, we're gonna overspeed of course. Completely forgot about my uh, power levers there. <laughs> uh, FS Realistic has screwed up my camera here. There we go. Good. Right. So I can see Bora Bora down there. Okay, cool. So, carrying on with the checklist. Landing elevation is checked. FMS is set and checked. MDA is set. Arrival briefing is complete. Cool. Prog page. What was I looking for on the prog page? I can't remember now. <laughs> ETA 21 hours 40 minutes. Huh? Right. Off we go down. I'm not sure why MDA is still flashing again. Some some weirdness going on here. But again, I don't... <laughs> I would hazard a guess that some of this is, is of my own doing. Very good FPS in this aircraft though. Extremely good FPS. Twenty-one forty Zulu, yeah, that's about right, isn't it? Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's been a long stream chat. <laughs> Twenty-one forty, yeah. Thank you very much, the Tubugman. I'm uh, very smart today. Right, let's go heading here. And we've actually come out of vertical speed, interestingly. Right, so vertical, vertical speed minus 10 we're going for here. We might not even need that, to be honest. I think we're probably... I think we're doing a fair bit better than what I anticipated. Look at that, though. Absolutely beautiful. It's not study level for me yet. Yeah, I, I appreciate what you're saying, Jiffy. I, I don't think this is ever going to be study level, though, to be quite honest with you. You know, the circuit breakers don't work. There's no failures. You know, if you want to be able to study from an aircraft add-on, you need to be able to simulate the failures as well. So if that's what you, you know, I, I know the, the term study level means different things to different people, but that's, that's the way I see it. All right, okie kokie chats. Let's start to bring ourselves round. I 
applying a, a, a downwind now, basically. This is not actually Bora Bora, is it, chat? <laughs> I thought this was, because because of these islands around the edge here. I totally thought this was Bora Bora, but it's actually over there, isn't it? Don't hire me as your site guide for uh, French Polynesia. <laughs> is there an option for visible co-pilot? No, there isn't, but uh, welcome to the chat. Nevertheless, T-Light, hope you're doing well. Welcome indeed, welcome indeed. Um, right, so I suppose we could do the approach checklist now. Seatbelt signs on, we'll get the lights set. We'll leave taxi and take off, light off. Landing lights are set, altimeters are set and checked. Well, they are now QNH 1013. Cabin altitude is set. Approach checklist complete. Good. Right. Probably be... I think we were maybe... Maybe a little bit preemptive with our descent there, but... I think we should be actually... Uh, actually okay. Not sure why FS Realistic is giving this rumbling sound when we're decelerating. Ah, I think we're actually uh, pretty bob on there with our descent. Look at the little, uh, them little, what are they called? Water chalets that you can stay in. They modeled them in that part of the world update. I think there's some over here on Bora Bora as well. You can just see them there and there. Bora Bora looks ace in the sim, though, I have to say, because they've modelled in this whole middle rock here, which looks great. Water Villas. Thank you, Johnny. I think it was quite a good idea coming, coming around this side of the island. Very nice indeed. Very nice indeed. Tip you can use your condition level 100% as a speed brake. Okay, real pilots actually use that one as well. Love to see it. Very, very good. Very, very nice. David, welcome to the chat. I'm not sure the question there. Camera move. Not sure what you mean by that one. As in, well, I'm using the uh, an Xbox controller for the camera, if that's what you mean. But yes, I'm using the drone camera, yeah. I really hope this thing doesn't play up on the arrival though, chat. <laughs> I'm going to record the replay now though. I'll start recording the replay so I don't forget.
Sounds a yeah, I think the sounds are pretty good. I think the sounds are pretty damn nice. If you do like the scenery though, chat, do hit the thumbs up button, you know what to do. <laughs> Got all these guys down here. I wish I could zoom in more. Oh there we go. Beautiful. There's the airport. So powerful, this aircraft, I feel like, when you fly it, but... Oh, I forgot the seatbelts! No! No, we can't forget the seatbelts now, chats. Crikey, what a stream this has been. Anyway, guys, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Obviously, we'll watch a replay once we've landed. Feel free to put landing rate predictions in the chat. Uh, and if you've enjoyed it today, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Welcome. Um, not all the streams are quite this manic, and uh, we don't end up o overrunning the runway. In fact, I think that's the first time I've ever done that in the sim. In this sim. Um, so yeah, it's not a regular occurrence, that. And usually we're pretty good with our procedures, but obviously combined with the absolutely packed chat today which i'm very much not used to which so thank you very much for turning up today if you if you have enjoyed or turned up to the stream i hope you've learned something i hope this has helped you get to know the atr a little bit better and um yeah i hope you've you've enjoyed our uh look forward to hopefully getting back to a little bit more of a smooth uh, streaming experience next time we go live on probably on the on the weekend on friday Right then, chat. So at 3,000 feet here. We could probably go ahead once we get a beam. Um, I forget the name. Foxtrot Tango Bravo 11 here. We'll, we'll turn ourselves in. For an intercept onto final. Cameras look very smooth. Uh, sorry, fluidity of the cameras move very fast. Um, I mean, that, maybe that's just because we're getting quite a nice high frame rate in this area. 60 FPS, so that probably helps it look a bit more fluid. The Bromo Seema will get some use when we get a uh, BRA livery. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely on my list to do. Yeah, I mean, a lot of scenery is like that. I've been holding back on for, you know, an aircraft like this. And uh, I do think this aircraft is worth, you know sticking with i think it is it is nice it's really really it just feels nice it does feel like an atr do you know what i mean it doesn't feel like a default aircraft i suppose is probably one way to put it so yeah i like it i like it i'm also wondering how you put the tcas to below i've not found an option for that but it's always tcas above I've probably missed it, to be fair. Right, let's just double check. Approach is uh, activated. It is good. Right, Grant. don't think we can really turn in too much more than that. We might have quite a steep intercept to do here, chat, but mm, yeah, we're probably going to have to turn out a little bit as well. My vectoring here is not on point. <coughs> 80 FPS. We're getting 60 FPS at the moment. Because, I mean, I have my frames capped at 60, although it's for some reason today it seems to be going over 60, but nevertheless, it's averaging 60.
Right, let's give ourselves a direct now. And we'll arm approach. Sorry, Elnav, I've mugged that up there. <laughs> Elnav. Elnav capture alt star. Not sure if we need uh, VNAV enabled to do the RMP. There we go. Vertical flight path. VNAV alt. Okay, cool. We'll go to flaps 15 then. Speed is checked. Gear down. Vertical flight path, we're turning on to final, love to see it. Flaps 35, speed, flaps 30 rather, speed is checked. Landing check, this camera crew advised, landing gear 3 greens, flaps 30. Power management will set to take off now. TLU low speed is green, icing AOA lights as required. External lights are on. Four landing checks complete. Go around altitude wars 2,000 feet, which is already set. And we're looking good. We're a bit off center line here, but that's just due to my shoddy vectoring. Not getting a vertical uh, deviation indicator here, which is interesting. I'm sure we got that last time. Right, nevertheless, we are visual. I don't see any pappy lights, though, from this distance. Or at all, to be honest. Anyways, let's do this thing, chat. Autopilot disconnected. Your damper disconnected. get the flight directors off because it's not going to give us any guidance past the missed approach points. It's very difficult to see the runway. <laughs> very difficult to see my uh, PFD full stop. Minimum. Minimum. 500. Continue. It's so difficult to see that runway. Absolutely crazy. There's just a big, completely white smear in front of it. It does feel much better with 50% minus on the sensitivity that I do have to say. Getting a bit low on speed here, so just correcting for that. I feel like I look a little bit too high here, but it is a narrow runway, so it's important not to get thrown off by that. Although, I'm pretty sure I am high, but... Where's the pappy, bro? Oh, there's the pappy. I can finally see it now. Very long landing chat. Ten. Fortunately, this thing stops in a ridiculously short amount of distance. <laughs> oh, my days. Yeah, I didn't want to go around then, chat, to be honest. Probably would have, should, probably should have, but. 
I can't believe those pappies. They were just like invisible until we were just on short final there. I don't know if you guys could make them out. Right. Lovely stuff. We'll get the landing lights off. Good, good, good. Grand. Uh, weather radar can come off. Transponder will put on standby as well. Welcome to Bora Bora Chats. Yeah, it still still does feel quite sensitive on pitch, even though when I was in the flare there on that uh, with minus 50%. Good, right. Not the best landing, not the tidiest landing in the world, but I'll take it considering the circumstances. We'll get engine uh, one to uh, feather now. That was probably a bit preemptive there. I think it's two minutes you have to wait, isn't it, um, Hamid? <laughs> Oops, Daisies. Never mind. Oh. It's quite a bit didn't more quite a bit more difficult to control on just one engine. In my haste to get to the gate. Start the clock for two minutes, yeah. Got it, yeah. Yeah, definitely a bit ahead of myself there. Right, after landing, radar standby, flight control. Oh, these are already filled out. Interesting. Okay, well, we'll just read it. Radar is standby, flight controls locked, flaps zero. Trims are resets. Landing lights and strobes. We'll turn the strobe off as we leave the runway. Anti-de-ice was not used. Probes heating can come off. TIU can come off as well. We'll turn the boost off as well. Lovely. After landing check is complete. Right. Engine one shut down. It's a nice left turn here, which is going to be handy with our right engine. Lead off as well. Got it. Lovely. Thomas Rask is here as well. Love to see it. But everyone is watching Fly with Magna on YouTube now, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've been absolutely binging his videos for like the last, I don't know, nearly two weeks. Great videos, though. I highly recommend them if you haven't haven't seen them already. All right, strobe lights off. Taxi lights already... I must have forgotten to turn them on. <laughs> oh, well. Good, right, we'll come in here then. Next to our colleague, Mr. Thomas Rask. Yeah, 
Yeah, still streaming somehow, uh, Scorgasmic. <laughs> Mind you, it hasn't been that long of a stream. Six hours is not too, too long, I suppose. <laughs> My uh, bum is starting to feel a bit, a bit numb, though, I have to say. I definitely do need a, a break. That's the problem with these short flights, I suppose, because everything happens so quickly. It's very difficult to find time to get away and just stretch off whilst you're among, uh, talking to the chat as well. Mariner, welcome back, dude. Welcome back. Glad to have you. Um, how's the ATR? It's it's nice. It's nice. We've had some rather peculiar scenarios arise, but other than that, I think it is. I think it is quite nice, and it's it's only eleven pounds. Absolutely crazy. Right. Okay then. Good stuff. So let's go down here. Oh, we need... No, we've got the Gus Lock in. This should leave it to Feather. Prop brake ready. Prop brake on there. Beacon light off. And... Let's get everything else cleaned up, shall we? Windshield heat can come off. The AC wild generators were off when I turned on the aircraft so I'll turn them off as well uh, DC gen was one was off as well cool after landing uh, is complete we need to go back to here parking checklists parking brake engaged taxi takeoff lights are off Condition lever 2 is in feather. Beacon light is off. Transponder is in standby. Tail prop we'll put on in a sec and seatbelt signs can go off. Probably best to do the seatbelt signs after the tail prop, considering what Mohammed mentioned earlier on. But uh, let's get the tail prop in. Main door open. Wheel chocks in. We'll get the ground power on as well. Good. Right. Okie dokes then, chat. Let's go ahead and get external power on. We'll shut down the right engine. Right, that might not be the proper <laughs> proper shutdown procedure, but um, yeah, let's just call it my condensed version um, for today. Well, there we go, guys. Welcome back to Bora Bora. Um, I'm not sure that replay is worth watching back, to be quite honest with you. It was pretty poor landing. It was, well, yeah, it was a pretty poor landing. So I don't know if, I don't know if you really guys care to, uh, to watch that back at all. Um, but feel free to put your uh, landing rate predictions in the chat. And we'll have a quick look at the landing report in just a second here. Caribbean should have ATC coverage for the launch of the ATR. Amazing. I'll have to look out for that. All generators stay on all the time in normal air operation. Aha. Right. Very good. Well, I'll have to... Maybe that needs to go fed back to the developer because it seems like they... They, um... They're off, aren't they? When you first turn the aircraft on. Oh. The landing rate hasn't recorded either. Great. I think it, I saw it pop up as like 184 or something like that, but the, um, yeah, it's not recorded landing properly on Sim Toolkit Pro. Lovely. Um, mainly because of um, when we, you know, when we took off that last time, we kind of touched down again for just a moment, second, and it, it counted that as a landing for this, this one. So congratulations, Mariner. <laughs> Right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I'm sorry I can't get to all of your messages, but um, please do feel free, if you've got any questions, to shoot me a message on either Instagram or on um, Facebook, or even come over to the Discord, and uh, happy to answer any questions there. But I hope you guys have enjoyed. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Um, how do I join Fuzz Air on New Sky? 
Anyone can join. Yeah, anyone can join. Just go to New Sky and um, search for Fuzz Air on there. And you can join up and, and I'll have to accept you. But uh, there's no requirements, so I will just accept you. Guys, I hope you enjoyed once again. I'm going to get off. I really do need to uh, get off and have a stretch. And I really need a drink of water, to be quite honest. So I hope you guys enjoyed uh, once again. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. We'll be flying the ATR again over the weekend, probably Friday and Saturday. So stay tuned for that. Um, hopefully we'll have some more liveries by then as well, maybe. Um, yeah, guys, so thanks once again. Leave a like on your way out if you have enjoyed the flight today. Sorry it's not been quite as smooth sailing. It's always a little bit a little bit rough with a new plane when they come out. Um, and uh, big, big thank you to uh, Mohammed for dropping in today, our ATR pilot, my co-pilot for today, who's given some great little tips and, and helped keep me in shape as, uh, as a good co-pilot does. So thank you so much, everybody. Thank you very much for the support, for all the new subscriptions, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.